Yeah, well, what do you reckon about this book? It's more it's a classic, definitely a classic. Yeah, yeah, I was reading it last night, and it's a really, really good chess book. <laughs> because it uh, teaches one, the kid in the hat, and the kid in the hat strikes back, it sounds like a sequel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's all about solving problems and how to get rid of problems like a cat in the hat <laughs> with all its mates. Mm. So anyway, um, oh, didn't see you there. Um, I've got uh, a special guest star, of course. I've got uh, Mr. Matthew Ashton. Now, Matthew is um, a, a player from the Canterbury Chess Club and he's also... Um, He's the current champion of the Canterbury Chess Club, which makes him quite special because he's just taken off with the... What tournament did you take off with? Um, the Grim Reaper. The Grim Reaper? <laughs> What's that all about? It sounds a bit bad. Is it, do you have to... It sounds like... What? Yeah, well, it was basically a bit of a knockout tournament. So you had a certain amount of lives, and the best players got less lives. And if you lost a game, you lost a life. And if you went down below zero, you're out of the tournament. And so, and also, you can't score any points, can you? You can't get, you can't elevate your points. Is that correct? That is correct. So you got first, and you did. Um, your opponent's was um, also a, a, another person with a similar name. <laughs> um, said, "All I have to do is win four games to, to, because um, I think he was on zero. I think it was on and half. On half. So if you beat him, that was it. He was out. He was under He was under the zero. Mm. So, um, yeah, I've got um, uh, Matthew. Um, you're also the president of the... The University Chess Club. Yeah. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. So how did you get to become a president of the um, University Chess Club? Um, well, I joined the Chess Club in my first year. And then, so the, in my first year, I got onto the committee because I just applied and kind of got on. Yeah. And then our, the president at the time, um, he was leaving, so he asked me to do it, and I said yes. Oh, cool. So I've been the president for a year now. Oh, yeah. No, just um, uh, if you tr try to look at the camera a little bit more. Oh, sorry, so, yeah. If you want to, yeah. or just the screen. Yeah. So, um, the, so this is Matthew Ashton. Mm -hmm. And um, a young bloke, he's only um, just turned 15 or 16 and at <laughs> university. What are you studying at university? Uh, civil engineering. Civil engineering. How many types of engineering are there now at university around about? Um, it's about nine. Nine? And what are they? Uh, just a few of them, just off the cuff. Um, so there's um, chemical and processes, um, electrical, software, mechanical, and civil is a few. Oh, civil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and some other ones like forestry tree engineering. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds really <laughs> mechanical to me. Oh, it's not the one that's taken the most seriously at the university. There's oh, okay. Many... Who taught you chess, Matthew? Um, it'd be my dad. Oh, your dad. <laughs> um, and when did you start playing chess, Matthew? Um, so I first learnt probably when I was around like seven or so, but I only really took it seriously like. When I was about thirteen or so. <laughs> and did you have a coach of sorts, or was that your um, dad? Um, not really. I mean, my dad taught me how to play. Yeah. But then I mostly like taught myself like how to like bit deeper strategies and all that. Uh, how'd you do that? Um, well, when I started getting interested, I got a book and learned like a few things like openings and just like basic openings like end games and all that kind of stuff just like and then I just played a lot of games played a lot of games yeah yeah well definitely being the president of the um, university club and also being at the Canterbury club mm. that would help a, a great deal mm. um, you've just got yourself um, a bit of a prized position pos possession haven't you yeah yeah and so if you want to talk about that you can and if you don't want to that's okay mm. no problem that's well, a nice chess set, I'll mention that. Cool, good. Oh, that's really good. And it, and it's very important. Is it, is it important that pieces are well weighted, um, as it is in your case with this yeah. set? Is that an important thing for you, you think? Um, yes, I'd say so, because especially when you're playing a fast game, yes. I find if you're playing fast, yes. if the pieces are light, you'll knock them all over. 
Yeah, sure. Or they go flying off in the wind somewhere or some. Yeah. Um, why do you play chess? What's fun? <laughs> okay, that's a good question and good answer. I mean, that's a good answer. What does chess do for you? Um, hmm. Well, I think what chess does for me, it's like a good way to meet some new people. Because like, you can get a lot of friends from playing chess. I think one of the things I like about chess, saying that, because you can actually meet like heaps of different people, just like, different nationalities, just like a lot of variety, because anyone can play chess. Oh, yep, yeah. cool. What has chess got for you? Uh, wee bit similar, eh? But yeah. a wee bit of a variation on. Yeah. I mean, it's opened up a lot of opportunities. Like. So you can stick it on your CV, yeah. your CV later on that you've been the president of the, yeah. and that you've won um, Canterbury <laughs> Championships at least. Yeah. Even if you think that some of the players weren't mm -hmm. there. Um, what do you do if things don't go well for you? It doesn't have to be about chess, it can be anything. What do you do, how do you cope with when things don't go well, like even exams yeah. and that sort of thing? Yeah. Does that happen? Yeah, it's quite challenging. It's just I try and get over it, but I think chess is helping, like, just like, if I lose a game of chess, well, I mean, if it's over the board, I mean, it's just a game. It's like, you work out, like, maybe I didn't play well, or maybe my opponent's just better than me. So... So that's one thing I've noticed about you, Matthew, is that you don't um, throw a tantrum or something like that if you if you lose a game of chess, because um, you've been we've played a little bit of uh, I played a little bit of a similar with you and uh, and another equal opponent, maybe not so strong as you, um, and but I don't notice you get sort of like upset about it or something. You just seem to keep your cool. Uh, is that correct? Um, yeah, I'd say so, because like, if I lose, like, I mean, it's just a game, like, if I lose against someone better, then it's not like it's kind of, it's unexpected. Yeah, yeah. Just, I may, may get annoyed if I lose to someone who I'd expect to beat, but... Yes, yes. Hmm. Okay. Um, have you any special memories of any historical chess moments that you have seen or heard of in New Zealand? Have you got any, or...? Um, probably not in, like, like... Like, like New Zealand chess, but there's a few like personal ones which I've done quite well on. Oh, cool. Can we have a rendition of those? Um, so last year I competed in the South Island Rapid, and I got second equal for players rated under 1800, which was a bit wow, unexpected. Wow, yeah. That's a good prize, isn't it? I hope. Yeah, but it was definitely an unexpected one, because I wasn't expecting to, like, didn't know how strong the opponents would be or anything like that. And it's, like, probably the first, like, it's a real major tournament as well. It's, like, probably the biggest tournament I'd competed in. Because that was at Canterbury Chess Club. Any, any yeah. other moments? Um, so probably a significant one was I played, when I was at high school, I played in the um, inter-school chess competition. And like where schools played other schools, you didn't play anyone from the same school. And in my final year, I played on my top board. So I played all the best people from the other schools. And I was unbeaten with six and a half out of seven. Wow, that's awesome. That's really, really, really awesome. Um, so, um, any special... Uh, done that. How do you relate chess to life, please? Hmm. Well, I think probably chess, it teaches you, like... Probably teaches discipline. Because, like, if you make a wrong move in chess, like, or something impulsive, like, you can lose the game. Yes. And also teaches, for me, patience. Patience. Yeah. Anything else? Mm. We're talking chess and life yeah. general. How does it help you, if any, other than what you said? Mm, I think probably it's helped me deal with like losing <laughs> a bit better. Because I used to not be deal, deal with loss as well. And with playing chess, it's like helped me with that. What what are your favourite chess moments? You've you've just sort of oh I've done that yeah um sorry <laughs> um so we'll leave that next question you think ah uh, yeah okay we'll leave that next yeah. have you any advice for new chess players that are budding or yeah. wanting to take the game on and uh, what they uh, need to think about um, even though you've said yeah. a wee bit about that. Yeah, well, probably advice to new chess players, I'd say, 
I probably wouldn't give up too early, especially because everyone goes through a stage where you fall for traps, easy traps like the four move checkmate, you get your pieces taken one after the other. Yes. So I think just don't give up, you'll get better. And like if it's possible, try and find someone with a similar strength. Because then you've got a better chance of winning. So you're saying that you want to make sure you get some wins under your belt because... Yeah. So, oh yeah, that's the other question I forgot about and um, I, I've just remembered it. Um, I'll just write it in here real quickly or uh, so I won't. Uh, when, when should you give up, given that we've just spoken about um, new players, when should one give up? Because um, I was trying to think yeah. about this question yesterday. Yeah. What was it? Now, one should give up the f scholar's mate. Um, well, the scholar's mate works on beginners, but I don't employ the scholar's mate in my games because I assume that my opponents will know it. I, I occasionally, yes. Yeah. I mean, I occasionally use it against beginners to show the scholar's mate. And then I show them how, like, this is how you defend it, because it's not that difficult to defend against. How do you defend it against it, Matthew, yourself? Um, so basically, it involves moving your knight to f6, but you don't want to move it when the queen's on h5, because otherwise the queen can still go to the checkmate. Yeah, it's going to the... Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's um, a wee bit off the board talk, are we? We yeah. don't want to learn your secrets about, oh. um, I might try it one day. Oh, scholars, mate. <laughs> oh, no, I better watch out for that. <laughs> um, uh, ha have you, what do you think about scanning for cheating devices at um, chess tournaments? What do you think about that? Well, I think probably... Nowadays, because you got, you can basically have a pocket grandmaster with, on your phone. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, they could play moves that grandmasters could play. So I th think that probably it would be a good idea, especially because like, there's been more, it's easier to cheat now. You could just like get an engine and tell you the best moves. Because like back in the olden days, like because when chess engines weren't as strong, it's probably not as easy to cheat. Yes. But now nowadays, like you could just like, hey, I'll just consult an engine. This is the best move. Yeah. Con like convey it back. And then just like win your games really easily. Yeah, so um, still the same sorts of things, but um, do you think scanners at airports, etc., are dangerous to one's health? Well, I mean, I suppose it depends what type. I've never had really any problems like going through like machine like metal detectors and all that. I mean, if it's for safety, I mean, it depends what defines what dangerous is, like, as well, because. If it's like very minute, then it's like it'll be perfectly fine if it's for the safety of everyone. Because otherwise, you just get killed on the plane, or yeah, something. <laughs> yeah sort of something like that. I suppose that's the way you um, could look at it. Um, end games are simple in chess, correct? No, hard. It's probably the hardest part of chess. Because like, if you get an opening, if you go wrong on the opening, there's a chance you could get it back. If you go wrong on the end, well, you're going to lose. When is the end game actually met? When do you actually reach the end game? Can you please comment? Yeah, it's an interesting one. Because the end game, probably say when there's like not many pieces left. It's generally, yep. ge probably generally when each side only has like one or two of the major pieces. Yeah. So fine, because you have things like rook end games, bishop end games, queen end games. So I'd say when you've only got like one or two major pieces left. So if the queen comes off, um, like on move four or something, yeah. is that what you'd constitute as an end game? Or? Um, no, because if the queen comes off in move four, there's still like rooks, bishops, knights, they're still all on, all on the board. You don't want to advance your king up too yeah. soon and that sort of yeah. fray, do you? Probably when it's a bit safer to move your king would be a good... I think that's a good answer, sorry? Yeah, when it's safer to move your king like into like towards the centre of the board, it would be like good, just like... You say it's the end game. Generally speaking, Matthew, uh, apart from chess, what in life is important to you? I'd say the most important thing in my life would be my family. Right. Sounds a, a good safe answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, okay, moving on. Uh, what activities and principles help you at the chessboard? Um, 
So mm. activities and principles. What do the what helps you at the chessboard? You know. What do you find helps you? Chessboard. Hmm, it's a difficult one. So I'd say probably because I've. It's too hard. We'll yeah. move on. <laughs> no, I'll we'll have a think. Um, so I think probably because I played a lot of other strategy games, so it helps me like with obviously focus. So I think focus is definitely a thing I'd say a good principle because if you're not focusing, then you're going. You're more likely to make a mistake. Darn, that's one of my questions coming up. Oh, um, uh, strengths and weaknesses, what comments? Mm, I'd say probably strengths. You don't want to talk about weaknesses. Oh, oh, yeah, that would not be great. I'd just say, hey, I'm just not going to. Yeah, then you'll get into the position that I'll lose miserably. Um, let's say, yeah, because I'm taking notes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, um, let's say, I'd probably say... What would your strengths be, you think, or you can talk about strengths and weaknesses in a general t mm. um, term. Yeah, just in general. It, yeah, just in general. It doesn't have to be used specifically, but yeah. what do you think about um, that sort of thing, strengths and weaknesses? So then is it like me personally, or just like in chess? It doesn't matter. It's whatever you like. Um, so I'd say probably strengths. Um, I can be able to focus well, like when I can... When I put my mind to it, I can focus quite well. Good, I yeah, I think so. I think that might be correct. Yeah, because I find, especially like, if I'm playing chess, like some of the over-the-board games, like at the Canterbury Club, if you go on for like three hours, you've got to have like the focus and all that. So, and you don't want to talk about weaknesses at all? Um, <laughs> yeah, especially not on the chess board, because they'll probably get used against me. Okay, yeah. well, that's fair enough. You, so, I mean, there are a few, th I mean, there are a few things in chess I'm trying to help improve and, like, get better at to try. Because, I mean, people in chess play differently. Like, some people are more solid, some people are more attacking. Yeah. Uh, where to from here? What's your your goals and objectives? And it's not about chess or yeah. anything necessarily. It's just, like, life. Yeah. Uh, where to if you want to comment, if you don't. Um, I'd like to finish my degree first, because then, uh, then look at getting a job, a respect a job in one, one of the, in an engineering company, and maybe perhaps in the future work for like some of the big projects. So whereabouts, uh, if you could pick in the country where you'd like to work, where would that be? If it um, was in New Zealand? If it was in New Zealand? Oh, so not New Zealand? Um, I'd say, probably, yeah, I mean, overseas would be nice, but I think probably stick with New Zealand for now. So I think of work in New Zealand, I'd probably say somewhere where there's like lots of engineering projects going on. So it's because there's like lots of different things, which would be nice having Because I don't want to work on the same thing over and over again. I'd like to work on like different things. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Probably um, not Auckland though, because I find with Auckland it's like real busy and it's like just quite big and just all overcrowded. So what turns your channel? Um, what do you mean by that? Uh, well, uh, we could move on, but yeah, okay. it's just a question I got that what turns your channel, what um, what gets you gets you going and all motivated and, and uh, what what makes you react in a way that you you'll go all out for it if, it, mm -hmm. if it, that's what I think it means. Yes, yeah, so I think like often if it's like. Something that drives me, like, there's like a deadline, something, or like, like, I have to do this now, so you know. Yes. So that's probably like, yeah. I suppose the thing in chess is like, you have to do your moves within a certain amount of time, so it's like, you have to, you can't spend too long on your moves. Now, you're quite young, yeah. but um, do you adhere, or what do you think about the comment about the good old days? Well, man, it's an interesting one, because like, there's some things about olden days which are better, but there's obviously some which are probably not as good. So I mean, like, obviously we've got, like, better health in the old, nowadays, like, due to advances in, like, technology and medicine and all that. Mm. And I suppose, like, you get, probably have more opportunities, because, like, you can easily, you can travel everywhere. It's like you want. And, yeah, those sorts of things. Are petrol or electric cars? This is one of his <laughs> special questions. I go for petrol. <laughs> petrol, why? Um, well, a bit of noise. <laughs> bit of noise, okay. Yeah, it's like, cause Probably it's, is. 
So that's what they need to do is it electric cars make yeah. them sort of grunty sound. Yeah, I think it's something that makes it appeal to like more people. So I suppose the problem about electric cars is they're probably, I'd say probably the range of them, because like that's probably what puts people yes, off. Yeah. Which is probably not as bad around town, but when you're going like, if you want to go somewhere, like maybe you want to visit family or something or go on holiday, it's probably not as good. Um, and also probably the cost, because like they're only still in the infancy, so therefore they're quite expensive. So I think like they'll probably be a bit more accepted when they're like more like they're more widespread, so the price will drop. So Is yeah, it, sorry. So yeah, so basically probably like range of, ele of an electric car and like the other thing I said, cost would be the two main things. Because there's a wee bit of competition coming in with them now too, because yeah. you got Hyundai, and you yeah. got um, you've got Nissan of course, and Nissan Leaf, and you've got um, I think Honda have got. Yeah. an electric car and the hybrids and yeah. I don't even understand the difference yeah. between hybrid and electric except I mean that hybrids use in part thereof um, uh, petrol I think is that correct? Yeah so hybrids are a mix of the petrol and electric so they use um, often use like something like to charge the battery like on the, the motor to charge the battery so I mean hybrids are coming a okay. bit more common because like Formula One has got hybrids I mean, like the World Endurance Championship has hybrids, so I mean, they're yeah, becoming a bit yeah. more common around. Yeah. Okay, do you play blindfold chess, or have you tried blindfold um, chess? I tried doing it with um, like checkmating with a queen and a king blindfold. It didn't go well. Oh. <laughs> I kept going around in circles, and then I gave up. Because you were just the king with versus the queen and king were you? Um, I was the, I was, <laughs> you I, was to help them. I was the queen and the king and I just thought I could see if I could try it. It wasn't, it didn't work too well so I think I might just not do blindfold chess for now. Um, do you find focus important? You've already, yeah. um, uh, but you've already answered that. What zero times, <laughs> uh, now we're asking, a, an, uh, we're asking the engineer this question. Yeah. What's zero times infinity please? Ooh. <laughs> Well, I mean, anything times zero equals zero, but the problem is it's times infinity. Yeah. That's the thing. It's the... So, I mean, based on the fact that anything times zero is zero, I'd probably say for zero. You'd say for zero? Yeah. Eventually. Because, it, yeah, it doesn't sort of catch up with it, yeah. does it? Infin yeah. Infinity. Um, like we all know about um we all know about buzz light we, yeah, yeah and his um to infinity <laughs> and beyond yeah. and and so he can't uh, he can't actually get there can he but he's yeah. so confident isn't he yeah that he's going to get there what's zero times a billion well that'll be zero okay uh where's the billion gone well, i suppose it depends what your billion is to start with okay we'll just say it's a billion dollars yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, yeah, well, it's just vanished. Because zero is an interesting one, because like it ends up with some weird like mathematical things, like you can get like one equals two and stuff like that, all because you're dividing by zero. <laughs> <laughs> um, so another wee question, a little bit surrounds that, is why is it one times a billion loses the one ide one's identity from the product answer or product? However, the zero hero obliterates yeah. the billion and the zero is left standing. Mm, you see the difference? Is yeah. One lost its identity, where zero is standing at the end and saying, I'm a zero, and the one's just yeah. gone somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. Because the thing, I suppose if you look at it like in the mathematical sense, like the limit, if you take like time a billion times a very, very small amount, it will get like a very very small number but not zero so then you can it's safe to assume that like if you go to zero it will be to zero but what about yeah. oh, but what about the one yeah. when it gets multiplied by a billion where has that one gone has it just <laughs> <laughs> like you got a billion and you got one there yeah. and i'm just saying i'm just being really you know facetious really yeah. but where or pedantic but where has the one gone <laughs> it's normally not a sort of thing i can to 
discussion about it because often people just argue about it. Hey, it's like this and this. It's like, <laughs> and they're saying like they're not like tend like they don't tend to listen to the other person and say, oh, I'm right. And it's like no, you're and like, I'm right. No, I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very good at that, aren't I? Yeah. Um, so especially at the Canterbury Club. <laughs> so this is a new question for you, Matthew. Is uh, of 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 purposely um, export uh, imported from another country yeah. and from another person who does this, which is not yeah. possible because no one else does this. Yeah. If you agree with zero time, he's got to get to read the questions. Yeah. Um, if you agree with zero times something equals nothing, yeah. then what if bank with your many dollars times is your cash and interest <laughs> by zero? What what would you think of that? Um, well, I wouldn't go and put my money in that bank to start with. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fair enough. Um, what other games do you play and why? Because um, so, you mentioned some. Yeah, so I like playing like other strategy games. And what often, are they? Um, so I like things like um, Othello, Checkers, stuff like that. And also I like, play like, some card games. Like, some of it depends obviously on who's around. Like, I play like things like 500 with family and just like, other card games. Yeah. It's quite like Trivial Pursuit. It's a bit of fun. Does does your dad play chess now? So since you have um, since you've probably got to be better than him, I, I'm just um, we don't play much. That. Yeah, we don't play much now because like the difference between us and strength is quite a lot. Okay. I think the last time we really played was I think when I was like I think it was I was an intermediate and like we were practicing for the national like tournament, which because we won the quite convincingly, uh, the inter-schools back then. So yeah, that's when the difference in strength was probably not as great as it is nowadays. Yeah, because you're now a champion. Yeah, because... So, so what's it feel like to be... Uh, uh, I sort of heard a little bit the other day, but what's it feel like for you to to win that tournament on Wednesday night? Let's go on about that a little bit. Well, I mean, it was definitely um, a bit unexpected. It's like actually winning a tournament against all the real strong players there. Especially three minutes and two seconds, isn't it? Yeah. Especially because like people like some people like some of the real strong players like they'll know their openings real well, and get into a position they like. So it's like, yeah. So it's like definitely a bit unexpected, which is always good. So what's important to you in your life? What's important to you in life for you? Yeah. So I think probably most important, I'd probably say family, um, friends, um, also like to do well in life. So also another thing. Okay, moving on, what do you consider your style is in chess? Um, I like to be quite solid. <laughs> and and you're quite good at swimming too, aren't you? Swindling? Oh yeah, <laughs> swind swindling, yeah, I swindled a few games, like both over the board and online. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and what does, um, uh, does chess help you with a set good with bad? We've sort yeah, of spoken yeah. about that a little bit, haven't we? Yeah, we? so, a bit, yeah, so it's like, mm. except, like, if I do lose, it's like, it's like, my opponent might have been better. Especially, it's easier over the board, because, like, you can see your opponent, and that. I mean, obviously, online it's a bit different, because, I mean, some people do cheat online. Yeah, and how do you react to that when you suspect that? Oh god, I'm not pleased if I'm suspecting against a cheater. And I have suspected I've played against yes. cheaters. Like, most of the time, I'm correct if I'm suspecting I'm playing against a cheater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm often yeah. correct. Um, and uh, what do you think of the advent, any comment of 5G coming on board um, soon? Well, I'm not really much of a technology buff, so I mean... Don't really, no, it doesn't really affect me. Okay. Well, right. um, on Sunday, 23rd of July, 1972, round six of the World Chess Championships occurred uh, between Bobby Fischer and the the world champion of that time, yeah. Boris Spassky. Yeah. What do you think of Boris Spassky as Black signing a score sheet with resigns yeah. and then joining in the applauding for Bobby Fischer at that game yeah. round six? Oh, it's quite a significant game, that one. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a big respect, the fact that you, um, because it's such a good game. 
Therefore, it's like, it's good. I see it as respect, especially as the fact that Boris Spassky was from the Soviet Union and Bobby Fischer is the USA and they had all this Cold War thing going on. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and he um, he he was in the car, Bobby Fischer was in the car did, yeah. and saying, did you know what he was saying in the car? No, I don't. Okay, I'll answer this question because I asked it myself. <laughs> um, he was saying, did you see that? Did you see what he did? Did you see that... Um, Boris Spassky yeah. was uh, applauding me, mm. and um, and and that is a then Bobby Fischer purports to have said that that's the mark that's a true sportsman yeah. to be doing that, mm. even though he was um, quite sort of um, competitive, of yeah. course. Um, I'm, what? Sorry, I mean, but going on to that because I remember I saw this game like the Immortal game between Adolf Anderson and this other guy, which I can't remember what his name is. Um, but the the guy who was playing was so impressed with the game, he um, sent the moves to his chess club he was involved in. And yeah. It's now a really famous game. And there was a little bit of cat and mouse going on in that game too, because um, Bobby um, uh, sort of like just had him, in the, he had the, the cat in the hat. <laughs> he, had, he had him in the corner a wee bit, yeah. a lot of that. Um, the ending of that game yeah. uh, and he was sort of like toiling with him a little bit yeah. so maybe if you think outside the square it could be that um, Boris Spassky decided the best way maybe a Russian proverb yeah. is the best way to, to um, the the best way to defeat that sort of thing of ha 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 I've got you and I can yeah. even play Rook one to f2 and then rook f2 to f3 that's how good my position is <laughs> so maybe that's I'm, I'm just thinking that that's possibly one reason he did that as well um yeah, just that like, he applauded yeah just take your time like you can just improve your position yeah but he he wasn't actually when he went rook one to f2 he could have just gone rook one to f3 straight away <laughs> but he just like the pawn was on g2 so the rook wasn't going to be able to do an envelope attack. So what do you consider important for preparation of the board? I think we've asked that, but yeah. um, what do you think is important? Um, so I think for, uh, playing over the board, like, it's like decide like what opening you're going to play, like one that you know, because you're not deciding like, hey, I'm deciding I'm going to play um, oh, some ridiculous gambit when I've got no idea how to continue with it. So I think when you're pre pre preparing for the board, I say, plan something, like, do something you know, you just play the say play the board. Or well, not the person. You're not the person. Okay. So I mean sometimes occasionally if I'm playing online I see like have a look, see like what openings my opponent plays. Yep. And then decide, hmm, they like to do they exclusively play this one, so I'm gonna try and play this one and try and get them a bit out of their comfort <laughs> zone. Yes. Oh that's good. Like for instance, I played this game like recently. Um so I sort of looked at my opponent, they exclusively played the French defence. So what I did, I played d4 and transformed it into Queen's Cam, it declined. And I won in about 25 moves. So they were that, So it's very important, isn't yeah. it, to, um, that we've just spoken about that game with Bobby Fischer mm. as White, who played c4 on move yeah. one. Yeah. And then he transposed to a, um, a Queen's Gambit, but that through, um, just like you've just alluded to, yeah. That threw his opponent right yeah. off the... Yeah, because I mean, Bobby Fischer, he exclusively played E4. Yeah, he never played and D3 e and all the other things too, a little bit, yeah, you know, I mean, Kings and Dens. I mean, Bobby, yeah, I mean, that's his black, but as white, he almost exclusively played D E4. It's like, he never played Queen's Gambit Decline before that, and he'd only ever played the English, like, one or two times. So it's like, it was quite interesting, because I was reading about it. It said, like, they suspected, like, what if Bobby Fischer plays something else other than E4? <laughs> it's like, nah, won't happen. Nah, won't happen. Play C4. <laughs> I'll move one. <laughs> and and uh, what piece do you most like it uh, there, Matthew? Oh, let's see what I most like. I say I quite like the knight. <laughs> That's a big question, a big answer, that one. Yeah. A lot of people will like the knight. Why do you think that is? Um, I think it's because it's obviously got a unique move. Oh, I quite like that. Also, the fact you can like stick it in your opponent's camp, and it's not it's not easy to remove. Because <laughs> yeah. I had this game recently. I played online. I had both my, of games. 
Yeah, I do play a few games on Correspondence. It's mostly Correspondence games I play online. Yes, yep, Gives okay. me a bit of practice as well, yep. as well as over the board. And so I was playing this guy and I got both my knights. I had like a knight on e6 and a knight on like another square thing. He had like on c7 or something. They're defending each other. Yeah. And it was demoralising my opponent's position so much that they resigned on move 15. <laughs> I had, ab it was, I'm so pleased with that game. It was absolutely demoralizing his position. So I could just sit there and just move at my pleasure while his pieces were all so cramped. Just because of my knights. Yeah, that's a, a, that's a thing about, um, uh, about pieces in your opponent's camp. It's not like soccer, like I mm. say on my um, videos. Uh, it's not like soccer or coaching. It's not like soccer where you have to start uh, yeah. if there's a if there's a um, a center center kick yeah. that you have to start in your position. Yeah. You've got your opponent um, behind you yeah. um, in chess, so that's a little bit yeah. different from you know sports like soccer and that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, I suppose in soccer, like you've got to you don't have much choice, but then for chess, you've got like twenty moves to start with. In theory, I mean, some of them are always obviously quite bad, but yeah, you've got about four decent moves to start with anyway. Um, what piece do you least like of your own? Of my own? Hmm. It's difficult because like, I respect like, are you, the pieces I use are probably like, let's say like, depending on the position it's a bit, because like, I can just, obviously like, bishops are quite useful when you have, in certain positions, other ones knights are useful and some stuff like that. It's interesting. I don't really have the piece I like, at least to like, probably, but I think thinking about it, I'd say the light squared bishop is black. <laughs> Do you? Oh. I don't like that because it's based right. on my openings. <laughs> Good weakness. <laughs> We've heard a weakness. No, just joking. Yeah, I mean, I'm not like, really that. Yeah, I mean, it's based, on like, yeah, it's based on the openings I play, and it's like, it's probably the piece that's hardest to develop, and for me, that's probably the piece I don't like. Um, and so, what piece do you least like about from your, that of your opponents? Probably the one that's the most annoying. Okay, so it's like a wasp yeah. hanging around or something. Like, oh no, all that night on on my third rank yeah. is really bothering me. Yeah, or well, that piece that just won't go away. Or that queen that's just like, just sitting there in the camp. <laughs> Any strong beliefs, morals, ethics? You can choose not to yeah. answer it, of course, mm. but... Some of these questions are yeah. a little bit personal. Yeah, I mean, so. I'd probably say, I mean, probably I'm not religious. I mean, I probably don't have any, but I respect the fact that people are religious or like to choose to be. And then, like, obviously, where I was like, it's an interesting one because, like, so how do how do you probably to answer? Probably might pass on that one. On okay, that day, that's so. cool. Would you play chess if your results were never any good? I probably would have stopped playing if, like, if I was consistently losing, never getting any better, and it would just, like, I'd probably just lose, like, the enjoyment of the game. So what if no chess? Hmm. So would that be the card games and all that sort of thing? What yeah, I don't know, it's a bit weird, because I've always, like, known how to play chess for a long time, so it's, like, it's a bit hard you'd, to imagine. You would invent it? <laughs> I would not I have the skill to invent a game, like, because complex is chess. <laughs> Well, you could have invented if you knew about it. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, what music do you like? Mm, so, it's, I quite like um, Foo Fighters and Queen. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah I can relate to Queen. <laughs> yeah, Queen, I quite like Queen. Got one of them on the yeah. chessboard often. <laughs> we get as many as we can, can't we? <laughs> so, yeah, um, just like, just moving my Queen saying, don't stop me now. I'm having such a good time. <laughs> and we are the champions. Yeah, no, we're not meant to be singing, are we? <laughs> That's one thing you said to me. Don't sing. <laughs> <laughs> and you've just done it. <laughs> I got you there. That was a beaut one. Um, so, yeah, I can quite relate to Queen and I've heard Foo Fighters. They can be quite, um, yeah. they can be quite loud. Yeah, it's like one of the things I quite like is like because they're quite broad oh, as yes. well, and also like there's also some real good songs that it's like absolutely smash, <laughs> like just turn up loud. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, okay. What's um what's your favourite exercise? 
you mean like physical exercise? Or yeah, yeah, well, basically, yeah. Yeah, so I, I probably say quite like sport, um, sport. I mean, it's a bit more difficult at uni because like a lot of the sport at uni is like more professional, like more oh, like okay. serious, like not as, it? as fun. Oh. So then like, because when I was like, I particularly quite like playing tennis. It's a bit of fun. Yeah, tennis. Yeah. I quite like tennis. So, um, sport or fun? Yeah. Or or serious? I'm just writing that down because yeah. um, it's sort of quite, that's sort of like what I'll call your question from now on because yeah. uh, that's brought up saying, what's your favourite pastime? Um, so there's quite a few. I quite like playing chess, obviously. I okay. Mean, We'll get past chess, yeah, but... Yeah, I mean chess, but I, mean, I quite liked um, just reading, just like for pleasure. And obviously it's, it hasn't been as much at uni, because obviously it's more the readings is like, you have to read stuff for uni, yes. because some of it's pretty dry. Yes. Um, so let's see, I quite liked, um, I recently quite liked listening to like things like Foo Fighters and Queen, as we've mentioned. Because I think just like, just downtime. Is, I'm also quite like just um, spending time like, with friends, like, which is nice, like, just like when we're just enjoying something. Often, like, often on like Saturday nights, we meet up a bit and, and just do, like, just have maybe a few drinks and like play some, like, do something fun. And what sort of drinks do you like? Um, I quite like cider. Cider, oh, yeah. good. Yeah, I, I, I used to like it too, but anyway. Um, so this is sort of answering. Already, this has already been answered. But does prestige or honour for you utilise a desire to play chess or um, not? So maybe part less, but maybe like more in the Canterbury Club. It's like because I want to do well. I want to show like I can, I can, I can play well against like real good players. And but then just at the university club, it's just for a bit of fun. It's like I mean, it's obviously but being the president. I mean, it's like not as big as like other clubs. We've been the president of like. A monstrous club, like big clubs. If I say because I joined the university club, but just it's for fun. Yeah, and like yeah, I had the um, I had one of your players from the Canterbury Chess Club last week. He met uh, Magnus Carlsen. What do you think yeah. about that? Oh man, that's like real impressive. Oh man, I do. I'd like to meet Magnus Carlsen. It's like they'd just be like, hey, I've met someone famous. Yeah. <laughs> Someone famous awesome. that I know. <laughs> yeah, and um, are you happy with your past performances? Yeah, I'd say definitely. Like, because at the Canterbury Club, I've had some good performances. Like, I've even if I've lost, like some, I've given like some of the good players a good run for their money. Yes, you have. Yes. Which I think I'm quite pleased with the fact that I can give like a strong player a good game. I, I find that your comment before about. You like to play a good solid game of chess. Yeah. That's how I find you. You're quite solid. It's mm. sort of like hard to sort of just whittle away at your position. Mm. That's what I found. Um, I think that's that is quite quite good. Um, uh, what's the word now? I've just forgotten it. But I think yeah. that's quite yeah. um, uh, almost intuitive. But there's yeah. the other word I'm trying to think about. What it, I think it starts with I. Quite. Instinctive? Or Not instinct, yeah, sort of, but um, uh, it's a good um, impartial look at your introspection, yeah. is the word I was trying to find. It's quite good introspection about your play, I think that's true. Yeah. I think it really is, and like, mm. I'm not trying to get any brownie yeah. points by yeah. saying that, but yeah. I, I've, I've found that you're. you're you're quite resilient when you're um, you're on the back foot. Yeah. When I think that you're lost, yeah. as I did the other day, and I got yeah. swindled in the yeah, played a couple of simultaneous games with yeah. yourself. Uh, I ended up getting six out of eight, but Matthew beat me two out yeah. of those um, four yeah. games that he played, so it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean the swindle was a bit lucky, but well, I just you know, figured, like... maybe, maybe it is, but maybe you know, like I was looking at in my head afterwards and I was like, oh no, it's almost like, was it luck or was yeah. it a little bit more than just luck? Mm. Especially yeah. with your, your king on, um, yeah, especially like, with your king like on, on H4, G4. H4 or something like that. Yeah, it yeah. was on, um, 
You were zone H5, I think. Yeah, because I figured, like, in that big game, I thought, I'm, I figured I'm probably lost, so I'm just going to throw all my pieces at you and hope and try yeah, and get something. Yeah, it worked. It worked. And and so that's one I lost. And the other one, I, how did I lose the other one? I think... Out of the eight games. I'd probably I say... Four. You probably tried a few, like, cheeky gambits or something. Like, you gave away just much your points. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was white and I, I gave... Um, so I lost two whites. Yeah. And one, two black, or that's, whatever. Yeah, but that was maybe the I play, Yeah, maybe I play better as black over the board, because, like, when yeah. I won the Lightning, because I won, I had a lot of games as black, and I won. Yeah, yeah, because it was out of the hat, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, whether you get white or black with the uh, Grim Reaper. Mm. Um, any aspirations for upcoming chess events? Are you going to play in the South Island Jacks? Um, no, because it's, it's in Hamner, so, like, it's a long way Hamner's away, Spanish, so then yeah. the problem with that is, like, it's just a bit more inconvenient, especially having a whole week not at uni. Yes, yes. So like, I was able to compete in the South Island Rapids last year because like, it was only over one day and it was on a weekend as well. So So would you consider just going up there for the Rapid or something um, like that? Would think, that be a possibility? I think just, just the fact it's like just only just going up for one day and like or something and then having to come back, I probably wouldn't. So Okay. Like maybe if like if the like, Champs were held in like Christchurch again, like the, and maybe if I had a bit less time on my schedule, I, I may consider entering. Because like last year they were held at the Canterbury Club, but I just had like too many labs and all that on, so I, oh, just, yes. I figured like these labs are important. I can't just say get out of my lap because hey, I'm competing in the South Island Chess Championships. It might not be considered a like a good enough excuse to like I mean re oh, not excuse, let's say reason yeah. to um like not have to do the labs. Yeah. Because even though I go to the Canterbury Club as often, the university stuff will come first, so. Of course, yeah. yeah. So you, yeah, you have to have that division of um, allegiance, don't you? Really, yeah. I suppose. Um, I'd probably say, as for like, in terms of like, in Canterbury, I'd like to try and win the uh, B grade this year, because I got second last year. So I'd like to try and See if I can win it. That depends if I play on it. Oh, <laughs> sure, you're playing in the A grader. <laughs> no, I, pl I played in the B grader a couple of years ago because they had a space to fill and I actually did win the <laughs> B grader. And so the president, the new president, has mm -hmm. been go had been going on about that a wee bit back then. <laughs> and so, um, uh, do you get what? we would class as a dud or fizzer sort of a game. Do you get that sort of thing? Um, and like, what do you do about it if you do? Um, well, games that obviously are a bit boring, like probably the opening I don't like is like when it's very boring, symmetrical. Like when your opponent decides, oh, I'm going to go for an exchange variation of this, because often I find symmetrical and often very drawish. I don't like in games that just go massively drawish and like very soon. Oh yes. Because even though like sometimes I have a very high draw rate, like in the South Island Rapid, which I played last year, I think I drew all my games except for two. <laughs> but they weren't like just like real boring draws. Yeah. So you like a bit of feistiness in it? Yeah, but like, I mean, I like a bit of a fight. I mean, if it's a draw, at least it might put up a like, it's a bit more interesting. Like a, board, like a game that's like, feels like dead draw and it's like not fun to play it. Well, you're in Bobby Fisher's um, books there because that's exactly how Bobby Fisher looks at it too. Um, he he didn't like draws whatsoever, um, so he had po and, and in fact I've got the disease as well, and I think that I actually um, would rather lose than draw. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of like I think I've got that. It could be just a weakness yeah. I'm trying to cover. Yeah, because like sometimes I try and push too. Hard. I want to try and push for a win because I don't want to have always being drawn. Because like my draw percentage online is quite large, but then because a lot of them is like, I find it more satisfying getting a draw against like a high rated opponent or something like getting out of a lost position and getting a draw. What what actually um, website do you use primarily? Um, so I use chess.com. Okay. And what's your what's your best rating on there? Um, so about. Three weeks ago, I reached 2009 correspondence. Oh, that's good. So is that what... So, yeah, I'm coming up to that question. Yeah. Um, how do you handle a losing streak, if any? 
Uh, well, I suppose in correspondence games, because they have quite a few going on at once, it's yes. like you don't often have like heaps of losses going, like happening all ping, at ping, once. Ping, ping. Yeah, ping, ping, ping. Because I only have like probably only try and limit to myself to a maximum of 20 games going at once. Yes, so I think it's a bit more difficult in um, Blitz Chess because you're like, oh, I want to win this, I'm going to win this game. Next, it's like, but in correspondence, it's like, because you don't have heaps of games finishing all at the same time, it's a bit easier to deal with. Oh, it's handy when you do break it, like when you have a win, it's like, yes, I broke, I'm not, my rating's not falling even further. Because like, I, cause like, at the start of the year, I wanted to try and get to 2000 at some stage, and yes. I did, so I was real pleased with that. Yeah. Oh, it's good. I mean, I did have a bit of luck along the way, because I had a few opponents time out. Because, like, one actually, when interestingly, one of my games, I offered a draw, but my opponent timed out. <laughs> and it was a draw position. And I also had a few, because some of my opponents I played were cheating, so I got points back. Which is quite handy. What's your favourite movie and why? Ooh, um, have you got one? I'm not too sure whose favourite movie is. Because I, yeah, because I quite like the Harry Potter films because I've seen them over and over again. And it's like still really, it's still really good. So that sounds like a favourite. Yeah. Harry Potter. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite good, isn't it? Really. Yeah. In a way. Um, what particular one of that 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 series of movies would you like? The Philosopher's Stone, or which one would you? Yeah. Or would you be drawn to more than the others? I don't know, because they're all quite good in their own way. So I'd say I quite like the Deathly Hallows oh, yes. part one, cause part yeah. two, because like, cause of that, because when we went to see the, the film, it's like real, like, it's like fully concentrating. It's like, oh my God, it was like really good. And it's like, because yes. I remember, because it's funny, because it, when we were doing that, my brother was just pestering that, because he, I don't think at the time he'd actually read them. <laughs> but he was like, who's this? Who's that? <laughs> Why is he doing that to my mum? It's like, I tried to, it's like, it's like watching the movie. <laughs> you know, there was a bit of a sad thing when, I suppose I shouldn't say the spoiler alert for people who haven't seen the movie, but there was a really sad bit in the movie. But I will not mention that because it's a big spoiler alert. Okay. Oh, well, good. Thank you very much for that, Matthew. Um, what's your least favourite movie? Which is the one you just don't like one bit? Oh, like one I've seen or one I've just like, in general? Um, because let's see, if we're looking at ones I've seen, um, once I ended up watching like Train Spotting 2, I did not like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who suggested it, it was one of my friends, and yeah. it was like not exciting. Yes. Um, yeah, it's like I'm not particularly fond of um, chick flicks. But ladies are, aren't they? Yeah, ladies are. I mean, if but... I. I mean, if I had a girlfriend, I mean, I'd, if I go, went to see a chick flick, I'd say yes to the fact. Yeah. <laughs> there may be other things going on. <laughs> yeah, there might be. We won't talk about that. Um, does anything annoy you at the board f from that of your opponents, Matthew? Um, not normally. I try not to focus too much on my opponent, just try and focus on the game. Is there anything you do that you think might annoy your opponent? Um, not normally. Just... Okay. It's just like, especially like in longer games I play at the club, I don't remember just like just sitting there just sort of thinking and not like, not distract, I don't want to be distracting or anything because that's not good etiquette. Um, what if your opponent is your, not your best friend, i.e. is a nemesis of yours, what would you do? I'd have uh, a desire, I'd have, uh, have a desire to absolutely thrash them. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like that. From what, it sounds like that person that you had a night on C7 and a night on E6. Um, <laughs> Um, but I won't, we won't go oh, there. Oh man, it's probably like a bit of a rival I had, like, oh, it was like, it was so satisfying. I suppose it yes. looks like it might be coming up yeah. following questions, so I might not mention it just yet. But yeah, there was a game that was very satisfying I played over the board. <laughs> so the next question is, have you got a bogey man in chess or a bogey woman in chess? So we don't want to talk about a bogey woman in chess, oh, yeah. but have you got a bogey man in chess? Um, so, um, Someone that just keep, oh, keeps beating you? Yeah, I mean, probably like, me. Oh, yeah, cause, I, mean, I did manage to beat you like, eventually, so like, yes, I finally. Maybe it was the same day I won the Grim Reaper, so it was like maybe I was playing quite well that day. Yeah, I think so. I think So do you think you get your days? And, yeah, because yeah. like, sometimes play like, there's a few guys at the club which are quite good and can beat me on my 
quite regular basis. Yeah. Which is good because like because one of the guys who did quite well in our tournament like because um at the university club we hosted a tournament. Yeah. And we had like, and one of the guy the guy the best performing UC student he was wanted to practice against me. He won quite a few. He's quite challenging to play against. Oh, good. That's good then. In a in a certain uh, horrible yeah. way, isn't yeah. it? Really? It's good. Yeah, it's good having people that better than you because you always just yeah. have to try. And... Yeah. Because I found that interesting. Like, because like when I was playing at the back home, um, I was playing at tennis at the local club. And, yeah. Like when I was like going at like thirteen or so, then I was like playing my best tennis. Like when there's like all the good people, and the club like got smaller, people left, and I felt like my performance dipped a bit. Yeah. So maybe because like, he wasn't the competition. Yeah. Yeah, it's the sort of thing I found. Like, if you have competition, you, you probably yeah, you need competition. If you just if you just uh, um, people don't know how to play chess yeah. reasonably properly and well and all that sort of stuff, it's yeah. just a bit of a drag, I think. Yeah, it's like it's when you just like munch all your pieces one after the other. Yeah, you need to have. If we, uh, yeah, if we don't have the players that are reasonable, we would probably give the game up easy, and yeah. even as well, unless we were just the world champion. And, and yeah, like I mean, at least have, like, if you had the world champion, you'd be a motivation to try and maintain being the world champion. Yes. Well, I mean, arguably, in some people that just the desire to actually be world champion, that like they probably maybe stop playing like shortly after, they're just because they achieved their goal. Yeah, which is why I think Fisher did actually. I think yeah. Fisher just sort of thought, well, I proved it. Yeah. I've reached um, the pinnacle. But then he also wasn't happy about how the tournament looked. Because, I mean, going back to the fact he despised draws, because he wanted to change the format. Yes. Because it was best of 20. Because right. he played in this game, it was best of 24. Yes. And, like, basically, he said, like, after he got a big advantage, he just, like, drawed a lot of his games, and then and then he just went closer to the, closer and closer to the title. Yeah, 12 and a half out of 8 um, versus 8 and a half. Yeah. Um, uh, anyway, um, so what's your longest game? Do you have a longest yeah. game? Um, I've got a few. So on the, all, over the board, that would be, um, I had games for going for about, just about, over, about over, just over three hours. Okay. There's a few at the club. It's a pity because I think I lost most of those, but. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think I was playing against Nick at the. Club. We had it. it was quite a lengthy game, and fortunately, I lost because I made a bit of a small error. Which, interestingly, in the computer analysis, it says it's only an inaccuracy, but realistically, I knew it was the losing move. Okay, yeah, yeah, because we can think it's a, a little bit of a yeah, we can think it's just an a, inaccuracy when we're looking at it, but yeah. the computer's got a different yeah. thought about that. Because, like, it exchanged once the queens had gone, it's like it was a simple win with the bishop versus knight in game. It what? made a pawn up. I think also saying that that so, wasn't over the board, like a few games are just over three hours or so. Um, online, because it's like days per move. I've had a few games yeah, that sure. gone, yeah, I've had a few games that have gone on for about four months. Four months? Yep. Cool. That's, that is a long time, isn't it, yeah. I suppose? Yeah, one of them was like quite satisfying, because at the time, my opponent was rated 200 points better than me, and that went on for four months and I got a draw. So, um, what do you think about um, the, I don't know the, the specific word for it, but um, that they can uh, put um, new electronic parts into your brain, sort of um, medical science, Ooh. that they're looking at that. Do you think that will be, like, just the way I look at it, but do you think that's even going to be possible to to chuck some sort of um, CPU in our brain. Yeah, I think kinda. the thing is, because the brain is such a complicated like organ. It's so an maybe, organ, yes. Yeah, I mean, like, you could probably replicate it to a degree, but not like fully. Yeah. I mean, that. Um, what do you think about medical science that it's, um, that it's going that way? It's mm. creating these ideas. Mm, I suppose. They're actually on the platform there. Yeah, it's interesting because, like, obviously there is would be an element of risk of like things like malfunction or that. Malfunction or um, yeah. maintenance. Maintenance, yeah, that maintenance. would be. Maintenance. 
you know, we need to oil the part. <laughs> oh, no, they'd probably use something like titanium or something that's not, not corrosive. Because they, no, of things so. like hips, like they use like titanium because it doesn't corrode. But titanium and that um, have got a lifetime. Mm. They have got a, yeah. they, ha they can, um, sometimes they have to be replaced if you get a, a, a hip replacement or something like that. They sometimes um, need to be replaced, I think. Yeah. I think that's correct. I wouldn't know. I'm not a medical scientist. I'm an engineer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, almost the medical engineers out there, aren't they? Um, what foods do you like, Matthew? You oh. can answer this if you like. Um, well, let's see. I quite like chocolate. Chocolate? I like anything my mum bakes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, mom, got the mom, big tip for mum. Yeah, because you've got to satisfy the mum because mum makes the best cooking. Oh, like, don't they? Yeah, and the best, best part is when you can lick the beaters after. Because like, cause <laughs> yeah. it's funny because my mum, my brother helps my mum do the actual baking itself, and then I come in once they've almost finished, like put it, put it in the oven, and I help lick the beaters. <laughs> <laughs> I won't, I won't add to anything that you've just said, <laughs> um, because I don't want to put my or in. Yeah. Um, uh, what foods do you really hate? See what I hate. Um, I don't like peanuts. Peanuts. Yeah, oh wow. I, I don't particularly like nuts in general. There are a few that are all right. I can cope like things like almonds are fine, but things like peanuts, pistachios are just yuck. There's <laughs> <laughs> no bit, no other way to describe them. Just horrible. <laughs> cool. Um. Uh. Have you got any provincial um, values? You've already spoken um, uh, in a in a unlikable fashion to <laughs> that of Auckland, uh, but uh, I don't think it was intentionally yeah. um, saying that you yeah. don't like Auckland. I but mean, like if there was a good job in Auckland, I might consider going up. But then, like I personally would not prefer not to go up to Auckland just because of the fact it's so big, it's like busy, like heaps of traffic around and just it might be a bit of a hassle. I mean, oh. If there was a decent job up there that I'd like to make consider it, but... Um, out of uh, Mark Gungor's four personality countries, uh, what do you believe you would hold most dear? Would you consider yourself the peace country more than the others, or perfect country, or the controlled country, or the fun country? Which country would you probably be drawn to most even though they're just yeah. parts of our yeah. personality according to Mark Gunga. I'd probably say the peace country. Okay. Because I think it'd be nice if everyone could just live in harmony, just like no fighting, no war, nothing, no like, everyone can like live with people with others' differences. Yeah. You do realise that the people in the peace country need the people in the yeah. control country, don't you? Yeah. But that's, yeah. that's more the personality yeah. uh, of what sort of... I think that's probably right in yeah. your answer. Uh, if there's a right and wrong answer, that I don't think there's a wrong answer. Yeah. If you could wave a magic wand and magically appear at any chess match in history, what would be that game and why? Ooh, that's a difficult one. Hmm. Well, you did see the questions before. Yeah, so. I know, I know. It's, it's, still, <laughs> it's still, I know. There's, there's obviously quite a lot of questions and then having to think about all of them. And... Yeah. Ooh, any chess match in history? Hmm. I think it would be quite interesting to see maybe like one of Bobby Fischer's ones. Like maybe that World Championship match. Where would you be if you were watching one of those World Championship games? Would you watch round six, would you? Yeah. Or would you watch when he doesn't appear? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bobby Fischer has lost on time. <laughs> Oh, I'd probably like to see some of the more interesting like games he played. Not the ones he just didn't turn up, but... <laughs> I'd probably see, like, because he's obviously a very strong chess player, like, real amazing. Yeah. He's almost like a magician at the board. But then thinking about magician, I think another one would be interesting. See, like, um, Mikhail Tao's, like, one of his, like, ga games, because he's, like, a magician on the board. Just, like, sacks a piece and then just, like wins the game for some queen sack and just happens to work because his opponent's falter. And, it, and by the way, he's been swindled too, just like yeah. I was on Wednesday night. Yeah. So he got swindled and I was a rook up in that game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, uh, if you could wave this same magic wand, who would you most like to play and why? So who would you like to play out of anyone in any time in history? Who would you like to play against? Even though you probably might get some like get, a whipping. You get whipped. Um, I think I'd probably like to play Mikhail Tao. Wow. Because he's like a real like, it's like his style is like is real good to like like watch his games and see like what his moves like. Because I've seen like I've watched a few of his games on YouTube. Like people someone going over them. And it's like amazing the sacrifice that he does. <laughs> yeah. And then his opponents don't defend correctly, and then he ends up winning. It's all quiet on the western front, and all of a sudden, blah. Yeah. And we're just suddenly just a sex of night, and it was sex of sex of queen. It's like it's stuff I could never do in my games because I would never be able to pull that off. <laughs> um, have you? Um, what's your favourite chess book and why, please? Have you mm. got your favourite chess book? Uh, ooh. Probably not. I mean, could I have a? I read through a few chess books, but there's nothing to say like. I'd say one that I quite liked, um, there was a book that was called 10 Most Common Chess Mistakes by Larry Evans, which I found in the library. And so watching um, grandmasters do really bad moves. <laughs> <laughs> it shows even the grandmasters make mistakes. Well, they do, yeah. They, the computers don't, of course. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, they obviously must make some like, inaccuracies with that, because I mean, they do win some games. I mean, a lot of them are draws, but there are wins in computer chess. Yeah. Yeah, of course, and there's there's just a different yeah. flavour to one mm. particular. Um, uh, do you have a favourite book and and why? Mm. Favourite book. Yeah, that's interesting. I quite like Dan Brown because like his books like real engaging, like real. It's like when I first read the Da Vinci Code, it was like it's like real good. It's like oh, I just want to get back into it. Oh yes, that's interesting. Any more? Um, let's see, I quite enjoyed the Harry Potter books. And Obviously. Quite, yeah, I mean, I quite like the Hunger Games. Yeah, I, I can relate to you on that one. Yeah, because I thought that the adaption to the movie that was actually quite good, especially because a lot of yes. like movies are not as good as the book. I thought the Hunger Games movies, they were actually quite good. Yeah. Um, brilliancy Prize, should it be a, for a positional crush or for a tactical crush or both? Mm. What should it think, be for yeah. a brilliancy prize? If you were, if you were as the president of the yeah. university club or any other club in the future, which mm. is obviously going to be training ground yeah. for you, yeah. um, what would you, um, what would you consider? Um, you would give the brilliancy prize for. I mean, I think I'd probably go towards a tactical crush because they're more impressive. Like, yes. cause you don't because a quite something like a queen sacrifice is not something you see every day. Yes. I mean, like, positional crushes are often a bit more common. I mean, a bit like that game I mentioned with the Knights on C7, that was a bit of a nice positional crush. But I think, like, the tactical crushes, like, they're a bit more unexpected. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, you don't really know where the other person went wrong as much. But positional crushes is like, your opponent, like, makes obviously a few moves, which are a bit easier. Because yeah. generally I find in positional crushes, they just falter and they'll make a blunder and you smack, like, break through. Now I find it quite interesting that um, if anyone like any of the strong players saw that move Bishop H3 yeah. against me, they'd say, "Oh, you definitely won the Bruins in my time." I would do no play because I made so many blunders. <laughs> so I would have said, "Why not going to set a good swindle, but not a brilliancy?" I was a rook up. <laughs> yeah, you're a rook up. <laughs> You had a bishop and a king and a, king and a queen. <laughs> and a few pawns. <laughs> and a few pawns, yes. The pawn on d4 was a problem. Um, what do you consider your five most important things in life? I think you've answered yeah. this already, I think. Um, yeah. With family and all that sort of stuff, but I won't put words in yeah. your mouth. I think probably, obviously, family would be one. I think having like, friends. I mean, Say um, probably having like a good job would be like a nice like be in the future definitely having something like stable. Um, there's something I thought of but now I've forgotten. <laughs> I do that. Yeah. Comes all with that. Yeah, probably come at some stage. Um, so let's see, family, friends, that like good. Um, I think just want to do well like, and just do well in life. 
Oh, we can leave it at four then. Yeah. Um, how do you approach one, more than one serious game a day? Or one, yeah. um, more than one, uh, what we could call a rapid game? Yeah. We could call that a serious game. Yeah. How, how do you approach that? And uh, there, please, Matthew. Well, I try and take every game as it is. I take, treat each position as it on the board. So, like, because I play a few, like, correspondence games as I've mentioned and like because I have about 20 at once so I try and treat each position like take my time on the, each position I mean, unless of course it's like an obvious recapture or something but yeah but try and take my time treat every position as a different thing and then just try and yeah I think it's basically just about it just like treat each position as it is is there a player you would least uh, like to lose to Interesting question, eh? Is there yeah. a player you'd least like to lose to? Mm, um, it's interesting, because like, I don't particularly like to lose to, <laughs> to anyone. That's, but I think probably I'd least like to lose to, probably like lower, uh, someone probably that's like lower rated, like probably quite a lot lower rated, because like you'd or expect... Or a six year old. Yeah, or a six year old, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would not be pleasant, that would be... <laughs> Because I think probably the thing that my parents did something like, because I was playing in a students tournament like back home. Yeah. And I tied for first, but the person I tied with was about eight. And my <laughs> mum was going, hey, you, you tied with, an, you drew and you drew against an eight year old. But she was quite good though. She was quite good. I think because she the, was quite good. Yeah, That's she good. was she was good though. Because the yes. fact was, I think she probably was watching a few of my games, saw that and kept the position, and she kept the position quite closed and then Try yeah. and like neutralize my probably I had a, probably a tactical advantage and then I offered a draw. Oh yeah. She, ex she accepted. Oh okay, that's good. Yeah. Uh, is there a player you would most like to lose to? Um. So that's um, the least like to. Yeah. Now, is there a player you would most like to lose to? You might have answered that already. Yeah, I'll probably someone. I'd probably play it if I lose it in a brilliancy. Probably like. And if they were like a brilliancy prize, I would not mind losing to them if that game was considered like the best of the tournament. Um, playing the chess, do you? Um, say yeah, I probably do have plans, and so if I don't go in with a plan, it's like I just don't want to just move pieces just randomly because I hmm, I feel like moving my bishop there. Okay, that's interesting because. Uh, last week the answer was I don't like yeah. to have plans and chess. They don't work for me. Yeah. But that was his interview. Yeah. What part of the game do you most like? Mm. I probably say quite like the ending. The ending? Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting one. Mm. Why? Um, I just find it's a bit more... It's just... I think it's because it's, even though it looks simple, it's deceptively simple. It's like there's a lot of complex things in it. Oh, okay. So yeah. it sounds like you like the... It sounds to me like you like the sort of struggle of um, yeah. the hardness, not the easiness. And yeah. Like we've spoken about that quite a bit. Yeah, because I'm like, I think it's just satisfying when you can win an end, like when you can like convert a game in the ending. Yeah. It's like shows like if you get a material advantage, so there's no point having a material advantage unless you can use it. Yes, definitely. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's um, giving a, a sort of a broad spectrum of your. Um, yeah. of your attitude and chess, yeah. I think. Because I find it interesting, because I find that some people online, like, the ending isn't actually that good. Because I've had games which, I've had losing positions, but I drew because they didn't make the best moves. But I've had, like, drawn positions, and then I won, because they made, like, one, like, small mistake. Yeah. Um, what part of the game do you least like? I'd probably say, probably don't like the opening as much, because the fact is, it's all, like, a lot of preparation is all like mostly out of books. And yeah. Especially because like when I played um Matt at the chess club, it's like when he plays a Sicilian defense, he'll know like 15 moves deep or something. And it's yes. like he'll, he'll know the position. I so saw then, that game, yeah. Yeah, and I got absolutely destroyed. Yeah. And, the, and I think I saw you, um, did you resign a game that you didn't need to? You could just take a piece? Yeah, I did um, resign that, but I figured, like, because my, my position was pretty bad. I was down on time. Even oh, if I'd yeah. taken, it would have taken the piece, been a pawn up. In my position, I did not like my position at all. 
So his prowess is quite good in that sort of game, isn't yeah. it? He, it? It sort of suits him quite well, I think. Mm. Um, what's your favourite opening for white, please? Oh, I love the fried liver attack. It's fun to play. <laughs> Do you? It's fun to play. Yes. <laughs> so I'm getting a real good understanding of your game. And uh, what's your favourite opening for black? Um, let's say, ooh, hmm, I quite like playing the French defence because I think it's quite nice and solid. And obviously, you going back, solid. yeah, yes. it goes back to the thing when I said like I don't like my light squeeze bishop when it's black. Because I mean, in the French defence, the light squeeze bishop's a little bit of a problem. Yeah, and there are ways to get rid of it, of course, yeah. without giving it away. Yeah. <laughs> to you, <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, do you do well overall in these two openings, or do you just like them? There is a difference. Yeah. Do you do well with these openings, or do you just like them? Do you well, just feel attracted to them? Yeah, well, I like the fried liver attack because it's fun to play, and it's like, it's been, especially because a lot of some of my, quite a few of my games, like, especially like solid, like, you know, positional maneuvering. And sometimes yep, it's, yeah, like, sure. it's like I'm sick of like just having to positionally maneuver everything. So I just want to do something, have some fun. It's like especially because I played a few games online. Yes. And like sometimes I go for the closed Sicilian because I don't want to go for all the tactical things in the open Sicilian. But then when I get sick of it, it's like it's like I don't want to always go for slow games. It's yeah, like, sure. Long well, and I just want to have some fun playing like. And then sometimes it doesn't go well, but I just want to have some fun. You know, like. But there's, there's a big contrast for me yeah. uh, as well. I can relate to that. Um, there's a big contrast for your um, choice for white and yeah. choice for black. So I mean, normally, apart from the fried liver attack, it doesn't, I don't normally end up playing that, but when I can, it's real fun. So I normally, as white, I normally go for Italian game because it's like natural, like one of the first things I learned. It's like, it works. And yeah, I sometimes go for quit. Because when I first started playing, I used to exclusively just play E4. And then I've started, and I've started broadening out a bit and learning other different openings and using them, like D4. I still normally go for E4, but I sometimes do play D4. Just It's a bit of a different. I just want to have a bit of a change. like Trying to ex improve my understanding overall of the game. That's just to cover things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tell you all my secrets because then you just use Of course them. not. No, you don't want to do yeah. that. Um, what happens if an immovable object meets an irresistible force? The right person to answer this question is right sitting next to me now. Oh, oh wow. That's, in that's interesting. That's a very interesting question. Hmm. Because it says immovable, and it's not going to move, but irresistible. So, so you are, I think, I think you're the first one to actually. Um, uh, sorry to button, but yeah. um, I think you're about the first one to really reason it out yeah. instead of just give the um, blanket answer. So it's quite impressive. But yeah, yeah so, so what do you think? A bit immovable. You get, I'd probably say it's interesting if you think about forces. Like if it's irresistible with forcing, but if it's not going to be moving, it's always going to exert a force back, so it'll never move. So yeah. I'd assume that the forces would be equal. So it would. I'd assume it just stay the same. I'd like just stay it as it is. So what happens when that irresistible force is going through this immovable object? What is happening? Um, Does it just pass through like a ghost? Or? Um, I'd probably say that the immovable object, but you're exerting exactly equal force back onto it. I don't know how, but it would still like it would exert an equal and opposite force back on, so the things wouldn't keep moving. Yeah, it's very important, I think, that um, what you've just done is that you're answering it with, you're thinking yeah, about it, because yeah. I touch on that soon, or whenever that is. Um, which do you like best, social or serious chess? I quite like the social chess. I mean, the serious chess is like good and it like, helps you improve, but I quite like the social chess. Like, you can be a bit more casual, have a bit of fun. Have some drinks, uh, yeah. have some peanuts. Oh no, not, not peanuts. Oh, <laughs> Chips. Yeah, something you like, know, just have, like, cider, just, like you can something, you, you can occasionally just like talk like, like with your opponent. Because I mean like, this was a game like, I played a game like it was a blitz game at the University Chess Club. And I thought, because I had a bit of fun, so I knew I was going to get checkmated in my next move, so I just promoted my pawn into a bishop. Because I knew I was going to get checkmated on my next move. <laughs> it's a bit of fun. Um, 
Where did I go up to? Um, do you like absolute quiet or easy going? And you've already answered yeah. that, haven't you, really? Probably a bit, yeah. I quite like just having... I mean, obviously it depends on, like, chess and, like, it depends on the situation. Like, sometimes I prefer, like, having, like, absolute quiet, but I really need to, like, focus or something. But then easy going is, like, that's a bit more, like, casual, social environment. In your opinion, what do chess clubs miss out on? Mm, I'd probably say... They miss out on probably more exposure as well, I'd say. Because, like, chess is obviously not a major sport here in New Zealand, because that obviously goes to rugby. Yes, and cricket. And cricket. Oh, yeah, because of the, the World Cup recently. Yeah, there are, yes. But, um, so, um, is there anything that you can speak to, even though you're an administrator yourself, yeah, yeah. Um, to to those outstanding yeah. um, chess administrators and arbiters and that sort of thing, uh, what can they do to better the environment for chess at I'm the thinking, actual clubs? Or I'm so? thinking like probably it'd be a good idea to have a more social, like definitely have more, maybe more social nights. Because like, yes, cause some yes. people see chess like, oh, I'm not that good at chess, I don't want to come. Or it's like, yes, yes. I'm, that's like one of the things, because when I was like advertising, hey, come join the chess club. Yeah, like, yeah. I found like, oh, I'm, I'm not that good or I don't. Yeah, yeah. It's like, that's the thing, so that's the main thing I, I found like people not wanting to join because I was just like, oh, I don't think I'm that good or I suck. Or that's, like, that's definitely the most common response I had for people saying they didn't want to join. Okay. Oh, so I think definitely you. making it a bit more social, especially because like at the university club we do like a bit more social. We're just like, we have games. Have pizzas. Not pizzas because we can't afford those. Oh, I've heard you have pizzas. Oh, we had have, we have pizzas at the tournaments, but that's because yeah. we had funding for the tournaments because we had an entry fee. So we use that to fund the tournament. I mean, to fund the um, pizzas and the prizes. Because we're not, because it's obviously can't be for profit. Exactly. I mean, we can keep some, obviously keep some money because we do have some, but we don't want to like just take all your money and just say, hey, we're not going to yeah. give you any of it back. Yeah. Because I feel like if you're going to pay something to it, you should probably get. So that's a, a that's a good yeah. point too. Is is like if you put the money in the yeah. slot, then you expect to get um, yeah. something back for it, not yeah. just a thrashing and yeah. told to go away. Yeah. And, ha -ha. Not just like you just lose all your games, get your pieces munch one after the other. It's like, hey, you had a, such a great time, you lost all your games, and you still your five dollars less. Yeah, you as well. But it's like, hey, you had some pizza, you got to meet some new people. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Because it happened because there was a break when we got the pizza, which was good. You could have some casual games. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it was quite good. I got to even I got to play a game during the break, which was good. So what do what do you think about um, costs of subs um, mm. in the same sort of light as yeah. the previous question? Yeah, I think with cost of subs, I think I suppose a lot of people would be like not attracted if it's like too expensive because they think like oh. I'm not going to be good, and it's like, I'm going to come, it's like, can I come all the time? I suppose you have to think of it as more, trying to make it more affordable is like the best part to try and get more people into it. I suppose another thing with chess is like, because people might well, sometimes say it's a real slow game, boring, and all that as well. So maybe like an idea is possibly, you could have like a smaller one, maybe like have like a social night, and like, yes. for like maybe for more like casual players. And maybe yep. have like, if you want to join, like you can maybe pay a one-off fee, which is a bit less, and you can go to all the social nights. And then have it maybe like yeah, one yeah, a bit more serious. Maybe like one like more serious, like one serious players want to improve a bit more. So have a, a variation in the in the middle, a variance yeah. between them. Yeah, so like that sort of thing. Yeah, and obviously it would depend on when people can actually like organise it, because it's obviously organisation is big deal to make something like that happen. That is too, isn't it? Yes, it's very important because often, like presidents and that sort of thing, they just sort of get told, oh, you're going to be the president. Oh, I don't really want to do it again. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, hmm. I suppose it's a thing. It's like somebody was like, oh, I want to be president. I think if people say, I want to be president, it's like probably not going to be as good. Um, women in chess, what if any needs to improve to attract them to a club? Yeah, it's an interesting because even at the university club, we've got mostly men as well. Yes, we've had a few, a few females come through, but it's mostly men. So I think it's an interesting one because often I find, especially 
at like high school than that because I found that most of the participants were male. Yeah, it's like there was a few. There was a few females, but like most, it was mostly all males. So I think if you want to try and get them to attract them to a club, I'd say you probably want to start at the bottom. Like maybe like because chess is normally played like a lot, played a lot of like male, like male schools. Anyway. But say like if you can introduce like women to chess like in an early age, they may be a bit more interested. Yeah. And keep them going. Yeah. So I think like if you start from the bottom, it should can gradually work your way up to the top. And so, um, when you know your weaknesses and strengths in chess, what do you do about them? And we've spoken about that, I think. Yeah, so I find when I'm playing, I try and like play to my strengths. But the thing with weaknesses, I'm trying to like maybe get a few more positions there to try and see like and hopefully try and do some more tactics but and do stuff like that because I prefer like more positional stuff because I've had a few tactical games that like you just make one mistake and your position collapses mm -hmm. mm, so I'm trying to like get, get a bit more exposure to those type of positions like to see if I can um, get better just like, try to get practice with the positions so I feel like the only way you can really get better is like if you just practice yeah yeah, I think so. Um, and and like a good thing, you know, if I just give you a, a little bit of a, a thing here is have a position in the book, um, you know, just a, a chess problem because I know uh, one of the top players from the club does this, does one of them a day, a real hard problem a day, tries to do one a day, and that will sharpen um, up one's tactical awareness and that sort of yeah. um, What's your favourite sport you've sort of... Have I asked that question already? Uh, I don't think you have. I, I mentioned no. a little bit about tennis and that. Yeah, a little bit about tennis, yeah, yes. Um, so I quite like watching motor racing. That's, oh, okay. Yeah, my favourite's the V8 supercars. Cool. At Bathurst and all yes, those Yes, at Bathurst, yeah. Yeah, it has to be at Bathurst, yeah. doesn't it? Of course, yeah. It's like I, I didn't get to go see the race, but about a week, because I was in Sydney for a holiday, three years ago and we went out to Bathurst for a day trip so we went around the track <laughs> cool was like, yes if my mum wanted to go around the wrong way I vetoed it <laughs> <laughs> I said that's sacrilege <laughs> <laughs> and and so um and of course we've got the we've got the EV uh, Formula One too now haven't we yeah Formula E yeah oh yeah yes. sorry E it's, yeah for, I, for, I thought it was yeah. EV yeah, it's called um, Formula E, that's the electric series. Yes. So which means obviously Formula One will probably be staying as like, there will be at least some form of internal combustion engine. If, so here the yes. Formula E is going to be like the official E, like electric series for like 20 years or something. Do you think they might get to be able to cheat somehow? Cheat? Mm -hmm. So like make it look like it's an electric, electric vehicle and really it's going... <laughs> <laughs> will they ever go that fast? Uh, so I suppose the thing is like they, because Formula E and Formula One are so different. Because Formula E, they like on street circuits because obviously they're a bit shorter, and they've obviously got different rules. I mean, some people say that Formula E is just for Formula One drivers who couldn't get, who weren't very, who weren't good enough. And what do you think about that? Um, well, I haven't really seen much Formula E. I've seen like a few like bits highlights that come up on Facebook pages, and that. But yeah, the racing seems quite close. They've got some interesting ideas. And like now they're actually able to put to use one car to finish the race. I suppose it's interesting if they ever do decide to go on like longer circuits, because the racing is a lot closer in Formula E, Formula One, same than Formula One. But yeah. like in Formula One, there's like three teams that can win. One that wins most of the time, the others that only win when the other first team <laughs> doesn't. Yeah. Because uh, New Zealand do quite well on it themselves don't they? Yeah, New Zealand's got quite a strong motor racing heritage. They had people yeah. like Bruce McLaren, Chris yeah. Amon, Denny Holm, only New, New Zealand's only Formula One world champion. I mean obviously the McLaren Formula One team which Bruce McLaren yeah, set up. Definitely. I think it's the second most successful Formula One team of all time behind Ferrari. Um, what's your favourite immortal game and why? Ooh. It's interesting. I, I, I got the um, the immortal the green the immortal green party game wrong last week in the interview so sorry yeah. 
Yeah, so there's but like this. Something like that. Was that, well, was that one of the ones played by Anderson? Because it's like, he yeah, had the Immortal yeah. game. Yeah, he and was he white. Had, he yeah. played Rook AD1. It was a really quite that, Yeah, move, that's, the, that's the Evergreen game. So the, immortal, oh, the Evergreen game. So there's two of them. So one's, the immortal, yeah, one's the Immortal game, yeah. which he um, sacrifices like a bunch of pieces. I mean, he does that in both games, but he sacrifices like a bunch of pieces. Like, or his opponent goes... And he goes Rook D8, mate. And then he, he sacrifices the Queen and checkmates with like a Knight in this something, a Bishop or something. I'm not too sure exactly. I think it was one was the Bishop and Rook. But anyway, what's your favourite Immortal uh, game? Or would that possibly yes. be one? Well no, I think one of before we go to that, I think no, like, so Evergreen game, because the opponent had like almost like a counter attack in one. And with the Rook A to D one, that's a very that's a very deep trap. I mean who would not take that piece here? I mean I would have taken that piece. Yeah. Because <laughs> like it would make sense. You just make, take the piece and you're threatening checkmate in one, but I'd say probably my favourite, one of my favourites, I'd yes. say it would be the opera game played by Paul Morphy against the Duke of Brunswick. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when he... Good games, eh? Yeah, he just like sacrifices a bunch of material, sacrifices the queen, everything, and then just checkmates with his remaining two pieces. Yeah. Um, do you like... Uh, oh, sorry. Did you know currently chess is one of the only sports plat sport platforms where... Uh, men and women can um, can, uh, can meet to meet and, and perform and um, compete against. Did you know? Uh, yeah. Any comments? Uh, well, it's quite interesting because I mean, you think in theory they should be able to play against each other because it's not like some sports such as rugby when men are sure. like because men are like more physically like, like stronger than women, so the woman would get um would be in a bit of danger. But like thing in chess, it's like. I suppose you can you can still compete on the same platform because like all you got to do is it's based on how good you are at chess and there's no like phys I mean it's obviously it's like, you know, physical like movement that could make the men have an advantage. So I think with that because it's probably good that they can actually do meet and compete on an equal. Even though women's I'm ratings, saying. yeah, even though women's ratings are a bit lower. Like, yeah, because a lot of yeah, because women tend to only play in women only tournaments. And, Higher than us, so. Their ratings like Julie yeah. Polgar and yeah, Susan Julie. Polgar and, yeah, they and were the quite, other. Yeah, they were quite good, but they generally play in only women only tournament. It may explain, there's also less of them, which may explain why their ratings are a bit lower. Because I suppose if you get too high and you're only playing against like the same pool, like you, you eventually will come back down to them. A bit like what Magnus Carlsen yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like Magnus Carlsen, like he got oh, up yeah. to like his first peak rating for the first time, then he like drew against like people and just moved back towards the pack. Yeah. And then now he's going back up again. Yeah. Um, so, um, do you like Faulty Towers? So I've never seen it, so... Okay. <laughs> um, so I can't ask you what part of it do you most like, and but one, one of your opponents from Wednesday night says, yep, and what part do you like? The whole thing. Um, can you impersonate anyone? Or... Um, no, I'm not that great. Okay. But I think the talent has gone to my brother. He can sometimes impersonate Mr. Bean. Oh, that's good. It's hard to get him to do it because he doesn't like doing it, but he can do it quite well. Yeah. Now, um, this is a wee bit of a, a question about surrounding the word fun or yeah. game, but yeah. clock fast or classic play, what is your preferred time control? It's mm, interesting. I do prefer the longer time controls because it gives yeah. you time to think. Yeah. Cause I see, because I see fast chess as just a bit of fun. Yeah. And like classic players, I can take a bit more seriously, take my time over my moves, and then try and improve. But fast is just it's for fun. Because you don't analyse blitz games. <laughs> well, you can. I mean, you can. I have. I mean, you can. The other day. I mean, you can, but there's a ton of blunders. <laughs> um. Then, um, help others or keep one's secrets to oneself. Any with, comments? Like in chess, or just in general. Well, it can be anything you like. Yeah, I do prefer like helping others, like trying to get them to improve, especially like beginners, because like if you, if you have an understanding of how to play the game, you'll probably enjoy it more. It could be, especially when you start winning. <laughs> <laughs> especially if you like, if you've been losing consistently, and then you start actually start winning, it will definitely feel like you're actually enjoying it more. And you can obviously experience with yeah. fast control, whereas if you're yeah. playing a long game. Yeah. You probably get, or you're playing on the internet. You're going to be more inclined to, yeah. sort of like, throw a spanner in the works and just see what happens next. Yeah. 
It's like uh -huh. when they're playing Lurts, it's like, oh, I'll just try this because I can. But then it's like, sometimes it's like, when I was playing a game, it's like, oh, I'm going to go for the sacrifice because it's only a game. It's only, yeah, it's, sure. only, it's only a Blitz game, I'm going to go for the sacrifice. Is it an advantage to um, share your thoughts and, and ideas and that sort of principles? Well, I've, I've seen studies that say that if you share stuff with others, you learn it better. Yeah. So I think it could help me improve my understanding of the game. Right, yeah. Yeah, teachers, um, teachers and preachers yeah. of the game yeah. can do that. Have you ever cheated in chess? And if so, what stopped you continuing it if you did stop? Okay. Have you ever cheated? I have, oh. so don't worry. You are, oh. If you have, you're in company. Oh, I've cheated once or twice. Oh, not Never over the board. I would never cheat over the board. That is considered a big no-no. I have. <laughs> <laughs> when I was it's about like, 17. Oh, it's like, I, like, sometimes I've just like, probably a few games, I've just been real frustrated and like, and there's like, think, oh, my opponent's cheating, so I'm going to, so I'm going to make sure you actually are, work out you actually are cheating or something. It's like, because like, it's just real annoying when you suspect you're playing against a cheater, like you want to compete on an even level. Because you, especially if you think like you're playing against someone that's rated this much. Yeah. But you're, they're actually rated this, but you're actually playing at this level. It's like, it's not fun to play against someone like that. I mean, you think you're playing someone that's like even. Yeah. But they're actually rated like this so, so, so if I choose to play against, like, say against a choose player against a 2,000 rated player, I just suspect you're playing against someone who's 2,000. Yes. Like, if I played a Grandmaster, sure. like, so if I play, like, someone that's, like, 1,500, I expect them to play, like, a 1,500, not, like, a 2,000 rated player. Yeah, that's right. Or some friend of mine says, oh, they could be on the up and up. Yeah, yeah. right. I suppose if you look at, I suppose, like, when they started as well and, like, also... Because if they're young, they're more likely to probably increase their rating. They've only just started playing in tournaments. Sure. Yeah. Or it could be their friend could be playing for them, and it yeah. could be a GM. Yeah. You know? So that's another. That's cheating too, isn't it? Yeah. I so. suppose another thing that cheating I found is called sandbagging, which is like you deliberately decrease your rating. Yeah. So you can play in a tournament, and then you just happen to win. Yeah. It. Sure. It was like I suspected I played against one because he had a convenient timeout just before the tournament started, which was a. Yep. 1800 to 2000 rated tournament. Yeah. His rating, by the time before he got banned, his rating increased to 2200. Yes. Then he got booted. Actually, I had a friend who had the same issue because, like, because he, he put his, created an account on chess.com because he said 800, but then he competed in an under 1000 tournament when his, cross, his actual um, rating would probably be much higher. Then he won literally all his games, some of them real crushing. So they banned him because I suspected he was sandbagging. I haven't told him that yet because I haven't seen him. So I, yeah, I do suspect it was not for cheating, it was for sandbagging. Because he, new account, set it a rating, compete in a tournament, then play like something like a 1500 or something. In an under 1000 tournament. Yeah, so it, like, the person you know might think, ha ha ha, I won. Yeah. But they, they haven't really, yeah. have they? Yeah. They're still like they're cheating themselves. Yeah, it's like, it's interesting to see like, how they actually were, um, like they were actually cheating or not, as well. It's like, yeah, obviously I found that, that the leechiest one, I definitely found it was, because I was playing a casual game, and like, it wasn't signed in or anything, and it's like, see, it did actually detect quite quickly that if you were cheating or not, so I suspect it probably wasn't, unless he did a very good job. Maybe I was just playing like real badly, and think he was like, just playing the same, like, way too well for it. And think he was cheating because he was just playing out insanely good moves. I would never cheat over the board, that's just considered. Because chess is like, it, over the board chess is like, there's a bit of like ethics and almost like unwritten principles. Yeah, sure. It's almost a bit like snooker in a way, like there's like written like things like e etiquette and that you do. Yeah, Because like in snooker, like if you make a fluke, you just say, oh, it was a fluke, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> So it's a bit like chess, like you expect, like you obviously like you shake hands, like saying like good luck. And it's often considered etiquette to resign in a totally lost position. At, at higher levels, at lower levels, I say, play on to the end. Your opponent might not know how to win. Yeah. Like you said about end games. Yeah. Um, in your mind, is it sporting if I can go to the chess engine for answers of how to play against a certain opponent like you? Mm. So I can go and just go... Find out what your moves are, and then just ask the computer how to play it for me. I would say that would probably be unsporting. 
Like, I mean, okay. you can go to something like, say, if you got like a grandmaster, you can go and see like, what grandmasters played, and like what moves. But like, and try and think of new ones. Like, but like using the engine, I suppose the grandmasters do use it for novelties, but not like say like this is like a dubious move. So I'd say probably I'll probably say not sporting if you go to like say, go to this variation. But then again, I suppose then they use like novelties, like they may find something with an engine and use it in the game. But then everyone else will keep using it. It's an it's an interesting question. Like I probably wouldn't like use it go to Thank a chest. Because like if I see something, I see like it looks dubious. It's like I try to find how do I crush this? Like how do I beat this? It looks dubious because it's not in, like an opening book. So it's like how do I crush this? I don't want to use a computer to say this moves bad. So therefore, this is a reputation because that would be considered cheating. But. Um. What do you think of cell phones, um, Google and the like, and learning or getting the knowledge from without the understanding or experience thereof, like looking up the answers instead yeah. of having the understanding of how to come to that answer, which I, I quite like, um, as I've already said, one of the um, questions I asked you, and uh, you didn't just answer it with the the fact this yeah. is the answer and that's why and yeah. I'm not going to deviate. So what do you think of cell phones and being able to ask Google where I can ask a medical question yeah. and sound like I'm a doctor at the end of it and the like and learn or getting the knowledge from without the understanding of that awareness. Yeah. I think there's probably some bits that are good, some bits that are not. Like if you're like suddenly unwell and like have symptoms you could like say Google and say hey that you might have like measles or something you should go see a doctor and be quarantined like yeah, sure. some things are good but some things is like not good because you can pretend oh this is definitely this i mean because you can have people that just like maybe pretend that actually real like a real doctor or a real engineer or something and just because i mean like with the um CT, yeah. with the ctv building like the person who designed it wasn't a real en he faked engineering degree yeah no it's terrible isn't it yeah I and mean, look what happened there yeah a lot of buildings fell, of course, though, mm -hmm. in that um, major earthquake of ours. Yeah. I mean, there's quite a few. I mean, a lot of them still did, were standing, though, at least. So, I mean, as long as the building stays standing, it should have helped keep the occupants safe, like, during the earthquake. Yeah. It just were, it just folded down, didn't it, really? It just yeah, just, like, seeing it on TV, it was down, like, yeah. just like, how can something happen like that? Because you, you think that New Zealand being earthquake-prone, it's like, you just should I think that all buildings should be up to standard, but then a lot of them are, yes. especially in Wellington, they're finding a lot of them aren't. Yeah, that's a bit of a worry. Uh, thoughts of likes or dislikes of us on cell phones? Um, it's interesting, because I see a lot of people that are always just staring down at their phone. It's like, yeah. it's like, why would you do that when there's like a whole... So like sometimes my mum actually almost suggested, like, I'm just going to bump into you just to say, oh, oh sorry. It's like when you're yeah. on their phone, it's like, yeah, so I think there's obviously definitely advantages, like you can easily, it's easier to communicate. Yeah, sure. That. But then obviously there's, a, obviously there would be negatives, like the fact that everyone's all spending their time on their phone and yeah. not caring about the outside world. Even though they're outside walking down the yeah. street or yeah, whatever Yeah, they're just like they walking do. down the street, but then they're just, they're just on their phone, just like that, just like not even looking at where they're going. Sure. Um, yeah, okay, uh, moving on. Further to the previous question, has the cre human creativity vanished from the game of chess yeah. um, with regards to um, what? Uh, we could leave that because I'm talking more about the, the question of um, the, the chess engine. So yeah. I think that might be out, out yeah. of sync with yeah, the but questions there. I mean, I can answer. I mean, the human creativity. I mean, there's definitely less like creative like play nowadays with the engines, because like moves like when Tao played, because he yeah, like could sure. do he could do an unsound sacrifice because yeah. like it would create complications. Yes. And the opponents would be able to find the best defense. Yeah. But now because computers are so strong, it's like if you do an unsound sacrifice, it's more you're more likely to try and find a reputation to it, and then it so then all the sacrifices in that often go out of play unless it's like for a surprise value. Yeah, yeah, and, and and the novelties maybe as well. You can't yeah. necessarily yeah. 
fight, even though you think an uh, engine can um, generate one, yeah. you, um, it could get into a little bit of laziness. Yeah. Just like relying on all your engine moves. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like, some lines, like, like the Nigel Variation of Sicilian, have been like, which is why I don't play it, have been analyzed yeah. like 30 moves deep, and it's like, yeah. why would I want to Even memorize, more. Yeah, memorize 30 moves, and then maybe like play five moves on my own, and then like you go into an end game, which is probably a draw. Yeah, well, I, I saw that the King's Gambit, um, if it's played properly, it always ends in a draw. Did mm. you know that? Mm, no, I didn't. Yeah, because, like... but we we just play it like we know, I know the first four, or five, six, seven moves, mm. and then I'm on my own. Because um, Ari, Ari would play um, on move two for black, he would play <laughs> Queen H4 check. <laughs> And and that was um, that's mm -hmm. definitely a, uh, even though that's been analysed, he would just play uh, e4 e5 f4 queen h4 check, <laughs> and then when you go g3, which is really the only move, yeah, uh, you just uh, he would just go queen e7 again, <laughs> and then he's hitting all sorts of things. Uh, so it's quite good. Yeah, I suppose there are, but there are still novelties coming. So I mean, it's, it's yeah. just a bit harder to find. Yeah. So I'd say there's, le there's definitely much less, but there definitely still are a few games like where people do unexpected moves or something. Right. So which people like, like Magnus Carlsen, like, I suppose he's a good example, because sometimes he goes for offbeat openings to try and get out of book and play actual chess. Like, because I've seen him play, start with knight a3 and a4 and <laughs> do ridiculous stuff, like going yeah, yeah. c6, queen, queen out check and switching the queen and king around. Like, yeah. yeah <laughs> that was in a bullet game, but still having some fun. Yes. And then other games who just make moves and then let his opponent make seven moves almost. <laughs> and then like literally start developing, <laughs> having some fun. So he's po he's probably tried to um, say, hey, come on guys, this is, um, we're, we're here to play chess and we're not here to um, just learn something verbatim and then um, just come to the game like Gary Kasparov can do. Yeah. He can come and he can have the end position on his chessboard before he leaves his home. Yeah. I mean, like, I can know some of these. I could bust out a few, like, a bunch of moves on the French defence, like e4, e6, d4, d5, knight c3, knight f6, e5, knight, knight f, I think, knight f, d7, f4, c5. I could just bust that out quickly. But then... Well, that's pretty good, Matthew. You do really, really well with that, because that's like a semi-blindfold game of chess, isn't it? Yeah. So you, you can work on that. Yeah, I mean, like, I, mean I can bust it because I played it quite a few times, so I can just like bust out all the moves because like cause sure. I've, seen, I've seen it so many times, I know exactly what moves I want to play in that position. Do you consider you work at the move, or are you intuitive in your play? Um, I probably consider myself working at the move, like trying. So I mean, like probably not like not a bit less intuitive. A bit of tongue twister there, but I'd probably say more likely towards working at like trying to find the best move in the position. It's probably like more like best. Sometimes it jumps out like this is definitely the best move, but all the time it's like trying to think this is will this work? Like king takes queen is an obvious move when yeah. you when it's king takes queen, which is just check you are yeah. taking your queen or yeah. I mean obviously some moves like they just come out, they just pop out, but others are like a bit more harder to find. Like I had this game which I show like everyone who comes to the camp, uh, to the university chess club, but my queen sacrifice, <laughs> <laughs> which is basically like the university chess club initiation. You see my queen sacrifice. <laughs> well, that one did. That was like it came out instinctively, but then I just wanted to rest over it just to make sure I was not going to give away my queen for nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough too. It's a uh, unless you have to do it in the split second. Yeah. And then so yeah. no, because no, I maybe I just don't know. But like that bishop move, I just found it's like it just popped out. It's like <laughs> why I could just do that. <laughs> Hang on, it's like if he takes that, it would be checkmate. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. It's just, I was like, it's just like. Thank you. <laughs> Thank like, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for rubbing that one in. Sorry, I mean, um, it'd be interesting no, it's just interesting to out the position that because I think I'd like to show it to some of the people at the club, see if they can find it. Yeah, well, it's a, a, actually not a bad wee problem, actually. Yeah. 
Uh, but the position's completely disappeared from my brain. Yeah, that's, I, I can just see a pawn on d4, c5. Yeah, I should um, have taken a picture of it. Because thanks. Sorry, I mean, I'm not. And then he play plasters it all over the chess wall at yeah. the Canterbury Chess Club. Um, my nine-year-old, uh, not my, uh, nine-year-old junior is finding quickly the sequence of Bobby Fisher's uh, attacking moves and games, including Queen Sacrifice. In your opinion, is this considered normal for today's um, youngsters, or is this a unique thing? It's an interesting one because there's. I know. Obviously, with the internet, there's so much more material you can easily access. So I mean, you can you can learn chess off that, but I think like because there's definitely coming like younger and younger grandmasters like. Cause, I mean, Bobby Fisher was the youngest grandmaster about thirty years or something, and then like there's been like youngest grandmasters now tw like thirteen, twelve, like. There's so many like more young talents that you hear about in the news. So I think maybe the fact it's probably still unique. Maybe you're just hearing about more of them in the news. That would be an because like there were still like tr chess prodigies back in the like back a little like, a while ago. Like there was like Paul Morphy, Sammy Rish. I can't pronounce his last name. Rishevsky. Yeah, Rishevsky. Yeah. So people like that, which are like chess prodigies. So say, I say we're probably hearing about more of them nowadays. So I mean, Bobby Fischer's games, like that game of the century, is very impressive. Because I mean, his opponent was so impressed that he actually played it out to the checkmate. Yeah, that was good. Um, we've done sort of what does a chess club hold for you? Yeah. I think have we? Yeah. And also, what doesn't it hold for you? Um, do you think a king on g1 or g8, etc. Ever gets bored and wants to take off on a holiday and um, what square would it like to travel to like would it be t206 or something like that oh, interesting probably the king just probably wants to go on a holiday maybe just slightly off the chest for a second watch the game yeah. and sit as not and does not get attacked or anything yeah because but i mean what does it feel like when a king gets checked i mean how does the king actually feel does it like say you've let me down it's like you're a che you check me oh just block <laughs> oh yeah, it's like no you move you block me yep you take him yep oh you guys are all useless you make me have to move <laughs> it's like if the pd had to actually move the king from but then if you want a good king like huh, walk i mean you could ask nigel short he had that famous king walk and decided, oh, take, I'm going to take a stroll. Yeah. Because I think it's funny, because sometimes when I make my, if I even make my opponent go on a king, I say, like, king stroll! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it, it's quite fun to um, sometimes run the king, because the king, in the end game as well, can, um, even some middle games mm -hmm. can be used as a yeah. piece and attack. Yeah. Attack, mm -hmm. attack, attack. If you cast probably, you probably attack yeah. probably. The king of all the time. Uh, for play at the board, what advice do you wish to convey here? Um, take your time before each move, because you don't want to give away pieces for free. Let's say... <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah. That's play, good. play something you're familiar with would be a first be a good one. Because yes, there's no point good. in saying, hey, very I'm good. just going to play this new opening because it sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, very, very good advice, yes. Anything else? Um, practice end games. Especially at the beginner level, if you make a mistake in the opening, you can you can recover. If you make a mistake in the end game, you probably won't recover. Yeah, because like because so. I've been teaching um someone like a six year old how to play chess. Recently. Yeah, oh good. Yeah, and I've been so I've started with the end game because I figured end games are most important. If you learn these and then we move back, now we're going to get to this position. You know how to checkmate like a queen and a king, but now we're going to get to a position using tactics so you can win material. And then simplify to that position, then win the game. Because uh, often I've seen even reasonably um, serious lightning players uh, fumble the ball when it comes to checkmating with a king and a rook versus yeah. a king. Mm. I've seen that, and like um, this player was um, primo, mm. and but yeah. Oh, well, that's excellent. That is really, really good. Um, uh, what do you think of the dangerous statement? One for the road. Any experiences of it either mm, way? So, 
It's not really a statement I come across like very like I'm not very familiar with, so I might. It's like it. David saying, "Do you want to have me talk to you longer?" Oh no, that's going to be too long. Oh, oh yeah, I probably haven't really had much experience with that statement, so I might pass on that one. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I was quite well behaved on Wednesday night, yeah. wasn't it? When yeah, I dropped very. off, I yeah. I kept to my promise yeah. uh, that I won't. Um, start talking to yeah. you because I did one time. Yeah. And it was um, it, uh, yeah. it was very inconsiderate, and it was um, something I won't. Hopefully, I won't forget. Yeah. Um, do you primarily sit at, at the board, or if you're playing a long ga game, do you primarily sit at the board and focus, or do you like to wander when it's not your move? Um, I normally, most of the time I just sit, but sometimes I do if I want to stretch or something. Yeah, sure. Sometimes I look at the other games, like if I want to, like if I need a drink or something, like. Yeah. Or if I need to go to the bathroom, it's like I'd get out of it. Yeah, like sure. When it's not when it's not my move, obviously, but. Yeah. Um, I say at the start of the game, have a good game. You've already seen this. Yeah. Uh, what do you do? Oh well, yeah, I wish my opponent good luck. Good. Even though secretly I wish them to have horrible luck and play really peace. Secret, oh. no, but honestly, but I would obviously would want my opponent to to do something that I could win, but of course I'd wish them good luck. It's yeah. like, because it's considered etiquette, even though secretly I'd want them, I'd want to win, which means I'd have to make some mistake. So it's like, of course I'd want to, you want, I want you to play well, because obviously I want to win, but I want to see a good game. So that, um, there's something that you said earlier on, I would just yeah. use things against my interviewee, yeah. um, not really against yeah. them, but um, like if they don't play well, even though you've wished them a, a yeah. good game and they, yeah. you want to win, yeah. but if they don't play a good game yeah. and then they, they lose ultimately, yeah. then you're not going to enjoy the game, are you? Yeah, it's like, like the thing yeah. is the thing because I don't like playing like in mismatches, like especially like, over the board or like or even like all long games like with big mismatches. Yeah, Cause, sure. Like because I played a few like because I played in a few tournaments, sure. like, like club tournaments on chess.com, and like some of the people because they have like it's open so anyone can compete. So I don't like playing against like people like real low because it's like such a it's, a it's a massive mismatch that you're never going to learn anything. Like I'm fine with people like me like. Even, Maybe like 400 or so points, like 400, 500, maybe up to 1500. Because they yeah. can at least provide a good game. Yeah, sure. Before, like, you don't, you can't, no, just have to wait, so wait for them to wander a piece. But, but yeah, like people like low enough, like, you can actually still provide a, a reasonable game, a reasonable challenge, even though they're probably going to lose. You can still at least have a reasonable game. So, and of course, at the end, like, over the border, like, in, like proper serious games is have a good game. Even if it, I knew I played an absolutely shocking game or if it was a, it was a badly played by way of the side it's still like obviously because it's polite and it's like considered a good etiquette. Um in chess post um fifty forty nine, is it seniors for you or a veterans tournament? What do you think is the better terminology? Um, I would probably say it's an interesting one because I associate a veteran with someone who's played for a while. And seniors, that might not necessarily be that case. So I think it's an interesting one. I'd probably go for seniors because I mean, it could be people just wanting to pick up their game, like to maybe old people who just want to get do something to help improve their like keep their brain active. Yeah, sure. Good. Because I associate veterans with um pe people have played for a while like yeah yeah they may so have played, so for, like, sure. they have played for like 30 years or something yeah sure so they it's it, so you're kind of saying that veterans for you would conjure up the the idea the concept that they've been associated with yeah. you know that particular sport or game yeah um do you believe it's best to be well dressed for uh, the game, or do you just come as you are, like in your pajamas? Um, well, I feel like there's it's definitely a standard of like, yeah, sure. like, for instance, I don't like going like, I often try and like stay like neutral and, and that when I, mean, I go to the chess club. I don't see it as like a casual thing, so I see it more like the Canterbury Club, but more semi 
it's like not casual but not like formal yeah so normally just like just like I do something if I normally have a, if I have like a t-shirt it'll be something like it'll be either under a jersey which is like not quite much, not much on or just like something that's like like maybe stri maybe some stripes or just like blank or like it's not like some like real weird pattern that sounds like oh I'm rebellious and a bit casual too, sounds too casual does that help your game if you're f um, feeling well dressed or um, I think I just go in something I'm generally just comfortable with just maybe especially if you have to sit down for a while it's like yeah sure so. mm -hmm. I would say that, and then obviously sometimes I got superstitious because, like, when I first started coming to the chess club, like, because I didn't always have glasses on, and now obviously because I've got them for a game to uni. So the first time I came, I was like, I, and I did quite well. I was like, hmm, I had my glasses on, even though I'm a bit short sighted. I did quite well. And he said, so I think it obviously must be good luck, so I stick with it. <laughs> even though I can see, I can see perfectly with the board. Well, if I take them off. Oh, so it's quite, yeah. it is quite psychological, yeah. some things like yeah. that. We can think psychologically yeah. um, impaired in regards to <laughs> some things like that, yeah. can't we? Yeah. Really? Possibly? Yeah. Hopefully? <laughs> yeah, a few superstitions, but like, not like, in terms of like other like normal clothes, I just go whatever I'm wearing on the day. Mm. Yeah, so I mean like, we could get into that and we could say, well, this is the t-shirt I beat him or her with. So I'm gonna wear, make sure I wear that one every time. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not necessarily like just because I may have beaten Matt like with them like in this. Although there's a thing with them. Um, speaking of that, sometimes I I go with openings that work. Like if it works against someone, I'll just try it again until they actually learn. So I actually did that against Matt because um, I played the semi terrace defense in a, in a one. So I thought, hmm, I'm gonna try to play that again. Yeah. <laughs> no it's, oh, like, it's not bad. The terrace yeah. is actually really, really. Yeah really good I think yes. um, for those that don't know much about opening so yeah. you can get a really good game with Tarish openings yeah. for black against yeah. the Queen Board, I yeah. think yeah because I felt because it was working I'll just keep I'll play it because like, sure. if it doesn't work then I'll try something else I think you deserve to win that's yeah. my opinion um, even though um, uh, he's very special to me Anyway, um, I was pleased to see you win um, that because I think you deserved it. So, do you think? Do you have your day sometimes? Do you think yeah. you have a little bit more like? Um, uh, is it a coincidence that you won, or is it your time, or do you mm. think you had your day? Do you think your day came on Wednesday night? Yeah, I think it was probably I was playing quite well like, most of the time. I mean, sure. I, I mean, it, sometimes I didn't necessarily play like perfectly. I just played better than my opponents. And, yes. It was like, for instance, one of my games I dropped a queen. Thankfully, they didn't notice. I helped, um, and I think it was your game uh, when we won't say his name because I don't know yeah. if, um, yeah. but I call him the Sir. Yeah. Um, saw Sir of the um, the chessboard. Um, but anyway, uh, I I said that he had actually moved his knight from oh, I D8 to F6. Yeah. Um, and I got told off. I got yeah. smitten down in flames. But guess what? Yeah. The director of play or arbiter cannot say anything because he was competing, even though he <laughs> said something. He can't com he can't comment if he's yeah. one of the competitors. He was the um, groom reaper, wasn't he? Yeah. But was. what did you think? Did you think that was really bad of me? I mean, I probably um, have to stand up and be counted. I mean, you might not have won then if you yeah. say what you're going to say. <laughs> I mean, the fact is, like you did point out, I didn't actually notice it was an illegal move. So I was like more trying to think, like that's threatening. That's so trying to think how am I going to, like what I'm going to do with my next move. I didn't really notice it was an illegal move because at the time. I could have got in trouble with you about it too. Yeah. Because I could have taken your focus off. Mm. But you duly won that game, of course. Um, but anyway, we'll move on, eh? Yeah. Because <laughs> um, that's, uh, I, I was offering him to take the whip out. and um, uh, Ultimate question to the ultimate answer. Ooh. Please brace yourself. Duh, everyone knows this question. Is, in your opinion, 
Do you prefer to eat with a spoon or a fork or a knife or chopsticks or hands? Um, Please be honest. So, generally prefer with a um, like knife and fork. Oh, knife as well. Yeah. Um, yes. Obviously, it depends on what you're eating. Like some things, such as fish and chips, you can have like with hands. But then other stuff, are, like most like meals, they just have like a, some cutlery, like a fork, fork, knife, or spoon, depending on what you're eating. Etiquette at the table then too. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's good. Um, do you like movie? Do you like the movie Aaron? Bro Erin Brockovich, have you seen that movie? Uh, no, I haven't. So. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, what do you think of New Zealand's movie, The Dark Horse? Oh, it's a really good movie. Yeah, it's really moving. It's a bit sad about the fact how they're all like the people are like, stuck in all the gangs, and which is actually real in New Zealand. Like, it's, we have people like in that, those situations, often like not on their own. Like, it's often because it's generational. It's the fact that they'll be stuck because their like, parents and their grandparents is like they, that's the only life they really know. Any other comments about the movie itself? Um, it was it was really good. It was really well done. I quite I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's a very good movie, isn't yeah. it? Um, prepare or not prepare? I say just about play chess but anyway that's why I say I just yeah. say just play chess but do you prepare or not prepare um over the board I generally just go in and play whatever I feel like so as correspondence I maybe just look to see well, what my opponent plays this so I might play this but realistically most of the time most of the time I just like play whatever I feel like um and if it's your last meal what would you have oh it's a hard one so your last meal, you you just been, you're you're not on death row, but you just been told that you know, if you were on death row, what yeah. would your last meal be? Mm. Not that that's what I'm saying. I don't really know. I'd probably say um, mm, green of... eggs and ham. <laughs> no, I do not want green eggs and ham. <laughs> How do you know? Like, well, not want them there or here. Was it here or there? I can't remember. It's been ages since I read the book, but. Because uh, we have green eggs and ham because we've got a, uh, my brother's called Sam and like so I think that's probably the reason why we had it. <laughs> Sam I am. Um, so yeah, I probably have mm, probably something my mum cooks. <laughs> I don't really know about it because it's just something. Last one, enjoy something because mum's cooking is always the best. Aren't they? And dessert, of course. And dessert. dessert. What, does it, what does it do you um, do you like most? Um, ooh, I quite like my mum's chocolate log. Oh. It sounds good. Yes, it is. Has it got ice cream and cream on it? Or? It's got cream and it's got sprinkled uh, on top of ice and sugar. Uh, and we have it with ice cream, so. Uh, um, I want to stay there. Um, uh, <laughs> if, you're ever, if you're ever up, just message me and say, hey, can you give it? You know, I'll say, now I'm hey, can you make some chocolate log? If you're up in Tauranga, I can message my and say, hey. <laughs> Oh yeah, there. there are tournaments up there. Yeah. Hey, if you're going, if you're going to the uh, chess congress, wrong, eh? yeah, if you're going to the chess congress in January. Yeah. Just say, hey, I want somebody to stay. Can I have some of your mum's chocolate log? <laughs> oh, we better not say that too loud because yeah. you might get a sort of, oh. there might be a, a surge of um, of players that want to yeah. pounce on your mother's place. Oh, you know, no, she I, could get famous. I, I mean, I don't even let people. No, no, I, I only put people there I'd know and trust like, yeah. as well, but Thank I may necessarily not be there because like over the summer I worked in Gisborne because I had um, my grandmother, she knew someone who worked over there and I got a job there. Alright. Okay, yeah, good. Um, is fist and chips um, the national meal of New Zealand, yes mm. or no? I mean, it's basically considered it. <laughs> okay. Is it okay or not? Oh, go back, oh, sorry, back to that question. <laughs> I mean, fish and chips, and then probably something like kiwi meal, like pavlova or something. Pavlova. Is that a meal? Uh, oh, as dessert. Well. For dessert. For dessert. Because okay. we claim oh, the good. pavlova. It's not the Australians, it's kiwi. Yeah, I know. And the same with, um, yeah, other things. Um, is it okay or not, PC, to sacrifice your bee porn in the opening, be that as if you're black or white, um, against a top strong grandmaster. Are you allowed to do that or was it PC incorrect? I mean, I would never do it. 
myself, like sacrifice a bee porn, like just like nothing. But I mean, it's been done in the past, and because I mean, Gary Kasparov played the Evans Gambit, which involved the sacrifice of the bee porn in one. So I mean, it must it must work as a surprise value. So I mean, if you but play, if you, it, I mean, yeah. if you play it all the time, it's probably not good. If you play it occasionally, like maybe a surprise, it would be considered all right. Against the strong grandmaster. Oh. I would never do such a thing like that. It would be ridiculous sacrificing a bee pawn like that. But I think like in terms of like maybe other people, like they make if it's a top grandmaster and they sacrifice it, it could be for a surprise value. They might not expect it and end up playing a like not playing the correct moves to the defence. Yes. Um Oh, good, thank you. Um have you tried copying your opponent as black? Um Depends on the opening. If they play, if they play e4 or something, I don't copy against e4. But against something like a hyper modern opening, maybe like c4 or something. Generally, it's often against c4. I may copy for a bit. Not against other openings, though. I find that copying is not as good. C4 against English, I may copy a bit. Okay, Matthew. Um, have you listened to Chess the Musical? No, I haven't. Okay, next one. Who are your sports heroes for Friends book um, already written? Who's number one sports person of all time for you? Why? Mm. Interesting one. Let's see. Um, hmm. It's a challenging question. I'm not too sure because I quite I quite enjoyed seeing Rod, play, watching Roger Federer play in tennis. Mm. You keep coming back to yeah, tennis, don't you? Yeah, because I played it for a version. Yeah. Yeah, because I always like Roger Federer. It's like he's great. I consider him the greatest of all time. So I mean. Okay, so we, your vote is Roger yeah, Federer. Yeah, I think because yeah, he's like it's amazing. Like he's still playing at like he's like thirty eight or something now. Yeah, it is. And like most that? people would have just ret the fact because he's dominated the game for so long. Yeah. And he's still very competitive at his age, which is, I think is very impressive. I'm very very sure he's in uh, Martin's book um, for the hundred best sports people of all time. Yeah. Which is, um, there's going to be a sequel, The, the Worst um, Sporting Disasters, or something like that. Oh, please yeah. don't quote me because of it. Yeah. Um, what makes a true hero in your book? Mm, I think probably someone you can, probably say someone that's reasonable, like you don't, and probably someone you can look up to as well. Yes. Because you're looking at hero as opposed to superhero, so you want someone ordinary that you can look up to that are doing extraordinary things. I think that's what um, his book is mainly about, is not the ones that have got silver spoons in their mouth and everything like that, where they've got all the best coaches in the world, and uh, mm. but it's more the ones that have, uh, like the Babe yeah. Ruth yeah. and those sorts of people that yeah. are honoured more highly. And, yeah. So, um, subconscious versus conscious, um, problem solving in your sleep, etc. Any comments? Um, so, subconscious versus conscience or conscious? Know. It's not problem solving in my sleep, it's not exactly something you, you go over chess from. I may end up thinking about chess probably because maybe because I've done it like, like fairly recently or something, but no, I don't normally go for solving problems in my like, visualizing positions and then as much in my sleep. Also, do you think candidate moves interrupt um, with the subconscious intuitive moves? Mm. So if you've got consciously four moves in your quiver to yeah. play next move, yeah. um, do you think they might interrupt with your initial intuitive move if you have one? Yeah, because I think it depends on what, because like, it depends how strong you take is like because like, yeah, sure. I think like Magnus Carlsen up here like he thinks like the move straight away yes. like the move based on his intuition but he like goes over it a lot to make sure it actually is is actually is reasonable okay and then yeah so but with other moves it depends if there's like something that sticks out like definitely this is like and often if it's quite strong I'd think like this is probably the best move but if there's nothing like really sticking out you know probably look at other possibilities Okay, and because we all draw a different sort of a pitch on the chessboard yeah. anyway. Yeah. So um, one person will paint one pitch on the chessboard, and mm. another one will um, 
maybe paint a totally wacky different yeah. picture on the board. Mm. Uh, like Knight A6 to C7 to E6 and then be looking at F4 sooner or later. So that's yeah. a wee bit of a... Yeah. Um, anyway, um, Conscious wants to win, Subconscious hopes to draw, respects opponent, any comment? Yeah, well definitely over the board, like definitely would respect the opponent, play like the usual openings I would play. Because I assume that my opponent actually is a reasonable, like, like villating, like will give me a decent game. Because I don't want to don't want to make the assumption my opponent's going to be really bad. Yeah, board. sure. Do you do that ever though? Does that mean, like assume my opponent's bad? Yeah. Oh, sometimes if I'm playing like real low rank, you'd expect them as like a pretty easy win. Um, but yeah, normally over the board, I expect like normally, I, especially if I'm playing something like the first time, I assume they're going to be like I don't know how good they're going to be, so yeah, I'll play like as I normally do. And if I after a game, if I know they're not good, I can I can try some stuff like maybe some interesting openings or unsound sacrifices. Yeah. Yeah, but especially over the board, I do think that even if I'm playing like some of the weaker guys at the Canterbury Club, I'll assume they're still going to play in a reasonable. Reasonable game. Yeah, sure, yeah, that's correct. Because I don't want to like, because it'd be a bit more embarrassing losing to a lower rated opponent. Um, and of the four knights on the chessboard, um, if they were in a race together, which one would you back? Ooh, um, it's mm, an interesting question. It's made up one, probably. <laughs> oh, let's see, I'd probably back, mm, I'd probably back the um, kingside knight for white. Because that's the one that moves first, often moves first. Oh, okay. So it'll be quick so off the it'll, fast. it'll be quick off the, the mark. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, quick off the mark. So it's gonna get gain an advantage. Because <laughs> so okay. they're, they're all gonna be horsing around jumping in. Yeah. Um and Yasa asks his pieces, yes this sh Sharan. Mm. Saran, um, asks his pieces if they're okay. Uh, do you have any similar concepts or techniques or views? Um, like that sort of thing. Not like that, but normally like when I adjust my pieces, I move, I position my knights and place them towards the enemy. Because I know some people like they put their knights like face on, like this but I put my knights towards the enemy. Yeah. Yeah, often. Unless of course I'm playing blitz and I literally just chuck my knight on the square and press the clock. Yeah. Oh that's awesome. Yeah. Um, what to bring to a New Zealand chess game so as not to stand out from the other crowd? The other crowd there um, to make it look like you're um, you're mm. one and the same a Kiwi bloke yeah. as you are. Oh, so what would you do? Oh, hmm, let's see. I'd what probably, do you bring? Ooh, I'd probably say something like hmm, maybe like, and you've got like fish and chips up there. So yeah, it's a do I? Yeah. <laughs> it's not like there's like it's been suggested before. So I mean. I'm actually not too sure. Like, probably something like very key, like, something that people associate as Kiwi, like probably something like, oh, Jandals. Jandals, yes, I think we should rock up in Jandals as a New Zealand chess game. Because okay. that is very Kiwi. Yes. <laughs> or, or it could, you could come up with, um, you could come up with, um, I was going to say something anyway, but it doesn't. Yeah. Um, what was the thing I thought? Yeah, just an All Blacks jersey, but then yeah. a lot of people. A lot yeah. of tourists buy that, don't they? Yeah. They're all buy her. So you'd have to yeah. make sure it looks second hand and like yeah. out of an op shop. Make sure it almost looks like maybe it's been used in a game. Yeah. Yeah. It's like all the, it's like imagine like all the eggs jersey with the gen, it was bringing fish and chips. <laughs> well thank you very much, um, Matthew, for um, this great length of time and I hope I haven't been uh, interrupting too often. And um, thank you very much for spending this time with me. Yeah. And uh, you have the right to pull the pin on this interview, so it doesn't have to go to air. Uh, but anyway, I would like for you to just, um, I don't want to do any more talking yeah. this time. I would like you to close this interview whenever you like and however you like. Yeah. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for the opportunity to do this. Um, I thought some of the questions are quite interesting. It's definitely some very thought-provoking. Yeah, it's pretty good. Quite enjoyed myself.